And welcome back, folks, to We'll Take It From Here with Joe and Don. My name is Joe. And I'm Don. And you are listening to a show where we talk about life with a goal to entertain, but most importantly, to make you think. Uh, we do this in a variety, via a variety of topics, ranging from mindset, jujitsu, fitness, current events, and much more. We also have guests who share their life experiences with us, which we do have one today. But however, before we get the show started, Don, how you doing? Doing well, doing well. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Uh, guys, you can give us a follow on Instagram at We'll Take It From Here Podcast. Uh, we like to do a question and answer segment on every show. That's been a really fun segment of the show. So make sure you get in questions every Wednesday. We'll pop up a post on Instagram. Joe usually does it. And, uh, you know, ask us a question and we'll answer it live on the show. Um, so we are on YouTube as well. You can watch this show. We'll be up on YouTube. Every show um, that we've done is now up on YouTube as well. So that's really, really cool. Um, if you could do us a solid and subscribe to us on YouTube, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Um, that opens up a lot of opportunities for us as far as monetization and uh, opportunities and things. Um, so you guys are awesome. Thank you for uh, everyone that's you know uh, left a review and rated the show. That's been great. If you haven't done so already, make sure you do that. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. So welcome back to the show. Definitely. Episode 55. Without further ado, we're going to welcome our guest here, Phil McNatee. Welcome, brother. What's going on guys not much how you doing great to have you man thank you thank you this is awesome hell yeah dude love it um no dude um there's a common theme that's coming on with all these guests so far i think the past like every guest has been from pure so folks for those of you who don't know phil is uh, i met phil via uh pure mma he's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu and uh but you know what this is what we're gonna do you know how the show goes we just talk about anything that comes to mind but what we like to do is we like to have our guests just introduce themselves and go far as far back as you want to do just let our uh, audience know like who's phil mackington <laughs> all right uh, i'm saying it correctly right McIntyre? yeah you are saying right. it correctly awesome. and uh when, I, when you put out the instagram post i was like all right he said it <laughs> he said it right because the, what, what do people say sometimes <sighs> Masenti. i mean i don't blame them right because it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense at all you know how it's uh how it's pronounced the uh -huh. way it's spelled it should be McKinty or something like that right? yeah the way it looks but it's it's McIntyre. Or so they tell me. So uh, that's what, you know, we'll go with that. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, so I don't get insulted anymore. It's been, it's been, you know, Masenti and all kinds of weird stuff. You know, people. silent N. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, silent N. Right? No, no, I, no. I think it's a silent A because so, the reason why I knew it was McIntyre is because <laughs> the golfer McElroy. Okay. Right. And right. And I'd be like, oh, okay, and I would like Google him and I put McElroy. Right, and right, McElroy, right. And that's like, a good example, fuck, dude. Like, what is going on? Are you, right. are you, if you know a bunch of, you probably know McDermott's, right? And it's spelled the same. Yeah, McD yeah. Right. I have, I have a, a best McDonald's. friend. His last name is McAndrew. So like, and it's not mm -hmm. McAndrew. It's McAndrew. So okay. I don't know. It's interesting. But anyway, yeah. tell, tell, tell our audience who's Phil, man. Like, as far <laughs> back as you want. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a brown belt at Pure. Um, been training now for over seven years. Um, that's you know, that's awesome. I'm a dad. I have two kids. Uh, my son Drew is a freshman in high school, and my daughter Abigail is in sixth grade in middle school. Oh damn! Nice. Yeah, dude. So, Bro, um, if you don't mind, how how old are you? I thought no, because you said a freshman in high school. I thought you were like like mid thirties. My man, you're. I love this guy. Wait, wait, for real? What is it? I'm forty three. Get the fuck I'm going to be 44 in March. Nice. God, that's man. awesome, bro. No, it's awesome to hear, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really thought you were good. Right. I, was, uh, I was 35 when I started training. Oh, damn. Oh, you know? shit. So, yeah, that's what, I mean, I was like getting in my 30s, and I was like, dude, you got to get in shape, some kind of shape or something, man, because you're not, not looking too good, you know what I mean? Not <laughs> yeah. feeling too good, not doing too much, you know? Yeah. And you got kids now, and they're watching. Oh, They watch man. everything, bro, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, that's like, uh, and I'm a, I'm a land surveyor, you know, um, and I, it's very much like a, like a trade. I, I run it like a trade. I, it's m myself and my business partner, we both go out and do our own field measurements. We both come in and, uh, draft our own maps, do our own research. We just do it, uh, just two of us like that. We don't really have any employees or really, uh, have any crews or anything like that. You mm -hmm. know, I, I came from the corporate side of it. Um, and I left that to come back into doing it myself just because, uh, you know, for a lot of reasons we, I'm sure we'll get into. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm married, my wife and I have been married for, going to be 19 years. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, brother. Fuck yeah. yeah. Um, we went, we went to high school together. We didn't like date in high school or anything, but shortly thereafter, like when we were 20, 21, we, I was 21, she was 20 when we, uh, started dating, you know, we, uh, lived in Carney together and then we moved to out here together. We've been living in Rockaway for 16 or 17 years now. 
Um, so yeah, like now we're, you know, the people have been around for a while and we have like older kids and now it's like all new people moving in the neighborhood is, is weird because we were, for so long we were the new people in the neighborhood, you know? Yeah. And now we've been living here for, you know, I've been dating and with my wife longer, as, you know, for half my life. You know, like yeah, more than half my life now. So it's like, damn, yeah, that's yeah. holy shit. Yeah, that's it's like pretty it's wild. So you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And like, and now we've lived in this house for you know, you know, well over a decade, almost two. You know, so it's uh, we're pretty, pretty settled in where we are now, and it's been it's been pretty good. Things are going really well. And uh, yeah, so that's my like my day to day, and it keeps me pretty busy now. Yeah, hell yeah. You also teach at Pure, right? So you're not only a jujitsu practitioner, but you also like to teach. How'd you get into teaching? Uh, I think I think as far as uh, since I've been going for the past three years, you've always been a teacher, right? I've been doing I've been helping with the kids class for probably I mean as soon as I was a blue belt, I started helping. Okay. I, you know I was offering to help when I was still a white belt, but they were like, look, you know, some of the kids are not white belts anymore, you know. Yeah. So we'd like the any adult who's helping to not be a white belt. And that was just kind of the rule at the time. I don't I don't know what if there's any standing rule or anything like that. That was a long time ago. Um, but as soon as I got my blue belt, both my kids were training. So, you know, Dan was just like, help, come help. And he pulled me on the mat and Craig was so cool. And Dave Ross was there. And yeah, that was it. I was like the fifth instructor, you know? Oh, shit. <laughs> that was crazy. It was like literally Craig and Dave, Quinn, uh, uh, Dan, and then um, there was a black, uh, another black belt there. And then myself, or a guy who became a black belt, but and myself. So, you know, I was, if I didn't show up, no one cared. <laughs> I was like very low key. And then little by little, people left and did their own thing. And uh, next thing you know, Dan was running it and I was helping him out and Isabella has always been helping out. So that's awesome. You know, that was how I started. Um, and I saw right away how much it, I mean, how much it helped me and how much I liked it, you know? Um, my kids are, you know, when they, when I started helping, my kids were like right at the age range of the kids that I'm generally dealing with in Jiu Jitsu, like, mm -hmm. you know, five to eight, nine years old, you know? There's older kids, but the bulk of the class is probably in that range. But now they're well out of that, you know? So it's uh, it's fun to keep being around little kids. And like now yeah. we have even littler kids. I, I teach the three to six year olds twice a week. And that's like a, a complete exercise in patience, you know? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But it is like so worthwhile because I've pulled my hair out for a while and now I'm starting to like settle into it and kind of understand so just little kids, but also just enjoy them. You know what I mean? It's so much fun. Yeah. And it would make some people crazy. Some people look at it and they're like, you're nuts. I don't even want that in my school, you know? Um, and it's a little hectic, you know what I mean? Like these are, these are tiny little kids, you know, they got boogers, they have to go to the bathroom, you know, you, you like, who don't know what's going to happen, man. <laughs> parents better stick around, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I got May Day, like calling parents out of the mat, like, but, um, how big is the class? Well, what, so the, when we started the three to six year olds, probably like six months ago, let's say, the first class, no one came, it was just me. Oh. <laughs> so the second class, there was one girl who showed up and we were off, you know, um, and then, you know, it just, it grew very gradually, but now there are days when we have 11 or 12. Okay. And most days we probably have six, six to eight range, you know? It's a lot, I mean, it's a lot of kids to, to yeah. handle, right? Especially when a lot of them are, I mean, there's only one that's legitimate three, but there's more than one that's four. There's two four-year-olds. Gotcha. And then, you know, and there's various levels of, you know, how much they're able to pay attention and focus, you know? Something like that makes me think, like, if you, like, imagine where you're going to be at 25, 30 when you start at three. If you just stick with it, dude. That's I, why I, I love it. Fine. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's one of the biggest reasons why I love it. Because, like, these kids, yeah. if, if they stick with it, even if they don't, I mean, it's going to help them so much in their life to oh, be yeah. exposed to this, you know, at a young age. I think it's going to be like, um, like, you're prepping the next generation of kids. What, uh, whether you, I mean, like you think so or not, like you're really prepping, you're teaching and guiding in something that's very hard, that that's going to instill discipline at such a young age that I think a lot like the next generation is going to sort of bring back the old school, you know, mentality of toughness. I, I think that's I that's what I foresee happening with uh, young kids doing jujitsu on top of what you said, Don, where someone who's three years old, four years old, when yeah. he's 25 is gonna be an absolute unit and savage. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, think about it, You're, you said you started 35. And that's even young. People are starting like 40, 50. Listen, you rolled with, with, with Jude, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Jude was in the kids class when I was a coach. <laughs> like, like, he wrecks me. Like, it's not even close, yeah. you know? He's 
so talented, mm -hmm. so technical, has an understanding of things that I'm, you know, one day I'll hopefully get, you know, he really is, is, is something else. And he was in our classes. Like I watched him grow awesome. yeah. into what he is right now. Yeah. And he's gonna keep growing. You know, it's and so it's just one kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Gavin. He's a green belt. He's okay. Jason's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll yeah, with yeah. that kid, man. Oh, he's already taller than me. I think he's like fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. And like I I don't know, I remember I was like saying to myself when he started going to the adult class, I was like, All right, look, he's my he he just came out of the kids' class. He's not even sixteen yet, you know. Every time we roll, he was coming for me, you know, like really coming yeah, hard, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And he's not a small kid. He, he, uh, uh, he might weigh more than me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. At this point, I think, you know, he's 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 definitely at that point probably close. And uh, I was like, I'm not gonna submit him until he submits me, and I'm not gonna let him submit me, right? Yeah, as yeah, far yeah. as I can, I'm never gonna I let him. But the day he does, then I'll I'll submit him. I, I would just let stuff go, catch and release, whatever. Um, and then he got me the one day and I was like, all right, he got me. And I, remember, I was telling my wife about it. Right. And then like two or three days later, I'm rolling with Gavin and he's like, Hey man, it's like, it's going to be my birthday. And I'm like, Oh dude, this kid's going to be 16. <laughs> like he's going to get his blue belt. So I'm like, bro, how old are you? Like, you're your blue belt, right? He's like, no, no, man, I'm only turning 14. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what? I'm like, this kid uh, no. is a killer. He's a wow. killer. Yes. Like, you know, and if you sleep on him or if you let him get a position on you, he is absolutely going to tap you out. Right. Absolutely going to tap yeah, you out. 14. It's a dangerous game. And now he's probably, I think he's 15, but this was a little while ago. He's been training for a while and he's a killer. Yeah. He could be another one. I mean, I, yeah, because I remember he would, so I don't go to the night classes anymore, but, um, I mean, he was he was always there. He was rolling even at fourteen. He's rolling with kids or guys, I would say men. Um, but yeah, he's big, dude. He's like fucking five foot eleven at fourteen. But that's anyway. like you ever seen that meme online where it's like the jujitsu mat, the level playing field. You can have a millionaire, a you know cop, a teacher, you know uh, all these different things. Such a variety of different people, and then you're all getting tapped out by a fourteen year old who's failing English or something like that. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy, bro, it's crazy. I was seeing um, uh, this one, this guy, Greg Anderson, he had put a post because he owns a um, jiu-jitsu gym out in Washington, and he's a black belt, and he's like ex-military and all that stuff, and he said he has a 15-year-old that he was rolling with, and he said he didn't let him happen, like, the, he put him to sleep. Like, he, 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 it's, it's, he has it on his page, he put him to sleep. He's like, dude, the 15-year-old is like learning how to kill people. Yeah, this is why I'm like, like, but it's also the learning about jiu-jitsu, and I wonder, I wonder how this this translates in the kids class. Do you see a like? Have you ever had a kid come in who may have been very uh, insecure? Maybe um, I don't know. Just not not. I don't want to say not there. Let's go with insecure. And then after a couple of, of practices, maybe a couple of months, you just see a shift in that persona. Oh, absolutely. Like I mean, yeah. I, I, absolutely. I feel like. I feel like you're lobbing me softball questions. No. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, uh, the like stark the distance uh, differences, right? Mm -hmm. Now, from, well, I mean, from a few weeks, but the kids who stick around for a little, even a little longer than that, yeah. I mean, kids who, like, legit, are brought to tears by the idea of running around the mat in a circle at the beginning of class. You know, a few classes later, you know, uh, no submissions or fighting. You know, or escaping back control. You know, uh, just and absolutely um, changing their demeanor. You can just see it in them. It's great. It's it's really really great. And if uh, and if and if it, if not, then it's like okay, why not? Like let me see what I could if I could figure out why isn't this? Why aren't they getting it? What is it that they need? What's what's different? You know what I mean? And yeah. then, And I can then I can approach them differently and try and figure out why they're why they're not engaging or why they're not into it. You know, but m almost everyone likes what we do if you give it a chance oh, yeah. man like i think everyone would like what we do it, it's so good hey, dude, what's there not to like? it's, almost <laughs> it's so at that point it's right? so yeah. good yeah. man it's so good like everyone needs it i feel like yeah i i agree i remember when i used to go to the night classes before the kids the kids was always what 5 30 right yeah, 5 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah. and I, I have to say the most dominant position that you see the little kids in is one kid is mounting the other kid right like, there's not a lot of back a lot of guard yeah. One dude's just mounting. And it's just so insane to see little dudes or little girls, really. Like, I know um, Sean's uh, daughter and son do it. And he's showing me pictures. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, hey, man, look, I'm on vacation with my family. And look, we found a statue. And look what my daughter's doing. And she's putting the statue in a weird naked show. It's like, yo, what? She's an example. Yo, she's she's like, a kid who awesome. used to cry during warm-ups. And now she is a killer, dude. Oh, 
She's oh absolute God. killer. That's awesome. She's oh. great. Her and this other kid in my little kid's class, they first of all, they both take both classes because they're right in the line. They're six years old. Mm -hmm. And Kai has a younger brother who's in, who's who is the youngest kid we have. Mm -hmm. And their dad helps, Sean. Okay. And uh, he's he's great. He, I don't know what I do without him. Uh, we've on the class together. He just is the best. He's there all the time. Um, but her and this other kid, Dominic, have like these wars. Like we'll start the kids off and be like, all right, guys. We're gonna do a little king of the hill. We're gonna start from the you know shortest to the tallest. We get maybe six or seven kids, eight kids in line, and the first two kids will be like real little, and we'll be, it'll be like all they'll be doing is pushing, and like you know one of them will trip. It's like oh thank God, yeah. thank God one of them fell so that we can get them, we'll get them off, get the next one. <laughs> but by the end, we get to Kaya and Dominic, and one of them will take the other one down, and the other one will it will like sweep and immediately get on top, and then they look to pass, but the other one is blocked, and it's, like, and it's like we don't stop, and we just walk. Yeah, that's what happens. Watch, watch, watch. Because it's like, they're so good. They're so good. And awesome. so it's great, man. It's great to watch that. Because she, yeah, she was totally intimidated when she first got there. And now, you know, she's she's past her white belt. Fuck yeah. You know, got stripes on her new belt. And she's going to be a killer, man. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Sure, she is. No one's ever going to, you know. No, no, no one's going to fuck with her. No, absolutely yeah. not. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, One thing you brought up is you said that there's a, a coach that's a father that has a, a kid in the program, right? How many times have you seen a parent start jujitsu because their kid did jujitsu? Man, it is hard to say, right? Because there's a lot of new people at Pure. And one of the things that I feel bad about is as Pure grows, it's really hard to like remember who everyone is and like yeah. see who's new and it's like, you know, so it's, uh, there's so many, there's so many people now, you know? Um, so it's hard to tell, you know, sometimes I won't even know that there's kids and their father trains too. Dad would be like, oh yeah, the dad trains too. You know, it's like, oh, well, I have no idea. And then they'll introduce me or I'll see him. And a lot of times uh, I only focus on, the, like when, when the kids class starts, I kind of tune the parents out and I focus on the kids. Because mm -hmm. all they, you know, I don't know if this is true, but I kind of feel like uh, they're here. I treat, I treat them like an adult. Mm -hmm. I know my son responds to being treated like an adult. To be, right. Maybe not like an adult, but like a, just a little bit higher than maybe necessarily you know what you normally treat it as right like i feel like you know we're gonna we're gonna act a certain way i'm gonna talk to you like an adult i'm gonna listen to what you have to say i'm gonna ask you about your day even if it's like silly stuff i'm gonna talk to you like it's the most important thing you know and i kind of tune the adults out and i just give the kids the attention you know what i mean because mm -hmm. i feel like that's what they're there for and i, and I kind of figured out that that's what the parents want too you know i used to feel like uh oh my God, we're not getting to any technique. Like these parents are gonna be really upset because I did not teach these kids any technique and they don't care because the oh. kids played games that day and they got energy out and they were happy when they left, you yeah. know? And after I was getting comp, you know, I run a whole class where I was like, I didn't do any jujitsu today. This is awful, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the parents were like, oh, that's so much fun. This is a great class. Thank you so much. It's like, <laughs> sweet. All right, you know what? You if you don't care that on days when they get crazy, they don't learn jujitsu, then I don't care. Uh, there, there are days when they're too crazy for me to teach them jujitsu. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll them or go play a game. You yeah, know? for yeah. sure. Um, but I'm, I'm sorry, you asked me about parents. I don't know how I even got oh, to that. Oh no, no, you no. Asked no, me that's about parents no. And, uh, how many of like parents have actually then signed up themselves? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I drag my kids into it. Oh, I love it. And that. I think that's usually kind of how it happens. Okay, cool. You know, yeah. it's usually you know like the dad and then the kids and then sometimes the mom too. Yeah, you know what I mean, but it's uh, yeah, I think it's usually that order. But there's all there's all different, you know. I don't know. I'm sure there are kids, parents who signed up their kids and then got super interested in it. I think uh, down at um at True North, that's probably the case with oh, some yeah, of the, with true, some yeah. of the guys mm -hmm. that have signed up. Yeah, with Joe down there. Joe and uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, Joe and Rob and they out of Colton's training center, right? Yeah, 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 nice. yeah, true North, yeah. yeah. Shout out to you guys, man. Um, but you know what I actually liked about that story you were telling me about how there's days in which the kids like, oh, they learn no jujitsu, but their parents yeah. love to have fun. Think about it though. Sure. They, maybe they're not learning jujitsu. Well, there's two things. One, jujitsu is a life journey, right? So they're going to be learning a lot. And two, what you're doing is you're bringing them in an atmosphere where they're now talking to and interacting with other human beings. Where right. as we know in our society now, everything is go home, take out the phone, go home, take out the iPad, go home, turn on the PlayStation. Yeah. And they're not doing that. They're actually being kids, right? right? Just now within a space and on a mat and right. trying to strangle each other sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's that's probably why the parents don't really care if they're not learning at that point because they're just happy they're not fucking watching, I don't know, Dora the Explorer or cartoons. Yeah. 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 What did you say actually got you into jiu-jitsu? What made you start? So yeah, uh, 
So definitely in my like early 30s, I just like was like I switched jobs a bunch of times. Um, and it was always like, you know, kind of like an upward trajectory, you know what I mean? It was always like a little more money or a uh, better position. So it wasn't like I was like getting fired and not doing well. But it, it, so it was things were going well, you know, um, but definitely I wasn't happy. I definitely wasn't working as a surveyor in the field anymore. You know, now I was like first I was project manager, then I was like senior project manager, then it's like you're a uh, director of survey, then, you know, at a certain, not at the point where I started jujitsu, but right around that point, I was like totally corporate, all, all proposals and like bullshit, you know, it just, it just sucked, man. And yeah. I wasn't doing any field work, so I really wasn't in shape anymore. Um, not that I was ever really in shape, I just like uh, wasn't fat, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But now I was getting fat, you know? Um, and uh, my main hobby was uh, brewing beer, which, you know, I like beer, you know? Get but, the fuck out of here, you brew beer? I was brewing beer for a little while. I had like a whole little operation going at my house, man. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So you made your own, your own type? Yeah, yeah. Like so I would order, you know, all the ingredients and stuff online. You know, I'd get the, the full grain and I'd, you know, grind them up and I'd, you know, do the whole night. Make the That's beer, the coolest fucking hobby. Ferment it. it was cool, but it was like a lot of cleaning. It was a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the product. You know? that's yeah, the product. it's a lot of drinking, man. You know, and yeah. I like beer and everything, but it was like it was just it was just a lot, and it was like okay, this isn't really, you know, doing anything for me necessarily. You know, it's not anything. You know, it's fun, sure, but you know, um, and I just I I realized that I kept saying like you know, to myself and to other people in conversations like you know you. Kids don't, aren't gonna do what you tell them to do. They're gonna they're gonna watch what you do. They're gonna see what you do, and they're not gonna do exactly what you do. But like you, the normal around your house, the normal in your life is like gonna feel comfortable to them, right? And in positive ways and in negative ways. If everyone in your house is telling everybody in the house, "I love you," then when they grow up, they're gonna they're gonna think it's really normal to tell everybody, "I love you." Absolutely. Right? And they're gonna do that, right? But if if they grow up in a house where the dad hits everybody, then, you know, when they get married, they're going to marry a guy who hits everybody and it's going to be okay to them. And maybe that's extreme, but you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm getting at. And I think that, like, you you influence, you know, you're, if you're a father, you're influencing your children positively and negatively every single day, every single moment, whether you like it or not. And you can't always influence them positively. But, like, you know, it, like, I was not influencing them positively. And, like, and, uh, you know, I knew what I had to do and I knew what I had to do even younger than that. I, you know, I did some karate in my 20s and stuff, but I never really, like, took the, like, like was like, I'm really going to do something to get myself in shape. And and another major hole, like, in my game of, like, who I was as a person was that I really knew in the back of my mind that no matter what kind of, like, what I projected, uh, it was bullshit. I didn't know how to take care of myself in any way, you know? I just knew, I know. And so... Like health wise, you mean? No, I mean like how do I t in, if in an altercation like with oh, other human beings? Yeah, self defense, yeah. right? It's like you know, I didn't, I didn't know, I had no wrestling experience. I had some karate and shit like that, but I wasn't sparring anymore, and I wasn't practicing anymore, and I didn't know if it was effective or not, you know. Um, and I, I also knew that you know, grappling and jujitsu was something that I should have done a long time ago. Like I literally had watched the first UFC. You know, like within days of it happening, I watched it on my buddy's like, you know, cable box where he stole mm, nice. all that shit, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and then we watched everyone after that. So, you know, I learned that jujitsu was super effective a long time ago. Well, what was I waiting for, you know? So, um, yeah, that's what really drove me to like do it. And, uh, yeah, I just walked down there one day and I took, uh, I literally did down the block from my house, man. I was so close to that. It's crazy. Nice. That's fucking awesome. And I went down there into the first place they were at, and Mikey and Andy weren't there because I think Mikey was competing and Andy was with him, but Ari was running the class. Oh, okay. And it was fucking magic. It was fucking great. And I was like, this is exactly what I need, you know? Nice. And that was it. I was off. So what was the first move you ever learned? Because essentially, for those of you who don't know jiu-jitsu, maybe some gyms are different, but usually at Pure, at least my experience was, you learn the move that day, and then you, and then if they thought you could, you know, spar, quote unquote, uh, if you were ready, you could spar. So what was the what was the move that I already taught? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Do you? I don't remember. You know, no. The shit. But I don't know. Like I, uh, just to go back a little bit, I like how you decided that you wanted to make a change, because it's not 
easy. A lot of people can look at things about themselves, do a self-assessment, find the problem or the issue in this case, right? How big or small, but it takes a different type of maturity to then execute. I hope not like talk, I'm not taking up the whole podcast by talking too much. Brother, you're, you're the guest. This is the, this is, this uh, is uh, the po- Phil right, is right, the podcast. Right. But, but you know, Jordan Peterson show. talks about like burning the deadwood, right? Are you guys familiar with Jordan I Peterson? I love Jordan Peterson. Right. I'm, I'm a big fan. Burning right? the deadwood, though. What's yeah, that? yeah. That you have to like look at, you have to look at your at yourself and what you're made of, right? And it's like so much. I, I guess I guess the analogy, uh, you know, that I'm not starting with is uh that if you're like a forest, right? Mm-hmm. You have every forest contains deadwood and you have to remove, you have to burn the deadwood and get it out of there. Yep. So that the forest can continue you to grow yeah. healthily, right? And uh, you gotta look at yourself and be like, what's deadwood, man? Like what's bullshit here? Mm-hmm. And then burn it. And then uh, like he, he says, <laughs> he's so dramatic, you know what I mean? I love yeah, yeah, Like yeah. he's a Jordan, <laughs> dramatic current the frog, you know? But he's like, uh, yeah, it's a good point. He's like, what if you're all deadwood, you know? And it's like, I wasn't all Deadwood, right? Like I knew I had like I had I had such a solid start and such a solid foundation in life, and I had, you know, my wife is amazing, my children are amazing. You know, I I found a a vocation that was satisfying. You know, uh, technically, you know, it satisfied like my, you know, I'm good. I'm good with math. I'm good with you know science. I like to be outside. I like to be hands on. It's all those things. I like. Maps. I was been drawing maps at my mom's, you know, dining room table since I was a, a little kid, and now I draw maps, and people pay me for it. <laughs> it's dope, you know, you know what I'm saying. So like, uh, I have a lot of things that were good, but I wasn't drawing maps anymore, you know, and I wasn't out in the field anymore, right? And uh, and I was I was drinking too much, and I wasn't exercising, and so I was angry, and so you know, like you name it, like all the things that go with that. Yeah. You, you know, you, we've all read about them we've all heard about them all those things were present in my life and i knew like there's so much it's just what what i was getting at is with the deadwood thing is like it's scary Mm -hmm. so i get why i get what you know because you have to just be like this is all bullshit you know and like once you start like saying but like this is bullshit it's like oh this is just fucking bullshit too and what what about this bullshit and it's like fuck man there's a lot of bullshit here yeah what isn't bullshit, you know? Like, yeah, what do yeah, I start yeah, with, yeah. you know? And it could be overwhelming, and it could, you know, to call yourself on your own shit, to be like, yeah, you just, you know, you just been lying to yourself, or, or looking past this, or, or you know, like you're just uh, neglecting this glaring fault, these glaring faults in yourself, you know? Um, I'm thankful, man. I'm thankful because um, I have a good marriage. I didn't, it didn't have to have been gone that way. You know what I mean? Like there are plenty of people whose marriages fell apart at the forks in the road where, you know, my wife and I got closer, you mm-hmm. know? Nice. Um, and I think that so much of that is because I was done with a lot of my bullshit, you know what I mean? And like, I, I was just, you know, um, I, be- I just became better. And like, I don't know, when you become better, people around you try to be better, you know? And I'm trying to get make my kids want to be better. I'm trying to, you know what I mean? Just let them see, you know, like, uh, yeah, man, I'm going to go train. You know, I knock on my kid's door at 6.15 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm going to jiu-jitsu. Have a great day. I love you. I'll see you at the school. And I peace out and go to jiu-jitsu. You know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. What kind of a mark is that going to leave on them? I don't know. I don't know. It's better than the other way, you know? Yeah. It's better than the way it was before where it was like uh, jump out of bed, run out run out the door. Yeah. You know? Rushing yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, so... I think that's a cool little thing. Oh, sorry, were you gonna say something? No, I was just gonna say hats off to you and Scott and the whole morning crew there. I always see the, I always <laughs> oh see the, God, I always see the post. Joe's not in it a lot of times. <laughs> Are you really gonna bring that um, up? <laughs> uh, that's you know, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's awesome. You know. Hey. It helps, me, it helps me out. I mean, honestly, <laughs> the mornings are my time. Scott, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fucking laughing. He knows it. Um, oh, so man. Funny. No, but, um, yeah, yeah. You, you got me. <laughs> he's uh, speechless over there. I'm very speechless. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so we were talking about yeah, knocking on the door. No, uh, yeah, no, that was good. No, but that's incredibly powerful because even though they're in bed, like, I'm not them, so I don't know. I can't speak for them. But to have your father knock on your door to tell you goodbye i love you i'm gonna go see you after school but i'm going to jujitsu 
Because even if they just want to sleep, what's going through their head is, fuck, dad's going to jujitsu <laughs> at 6.15. Yeah. So when they say it, I love it. I'm yeah. Like, they know, but, like, shit. but that's going to inspire them because I don't have kids, but I agree with your um, your ideology that kids are sponges. It's the truth. Like, they're sponges, right? So the best way to get them to do something is to do it yourself. So if you want them to have a tidy room, your room better be fucking tidy. So if you want them to be better and more secure, more confident, you better do that. And that's what you're doing right now. But trying. Like, no, no, easy. you're doing it. Whether, whether, you, whether you say you're trying or not, you're really doing it. Uh, so props on you for that. Yes, and your morning classes are fucking cool. <laughs> even though I've only been to one. Nah, even in morning ones. Come on. <laughs> oh, well, to well, yours. I, I, yeah, 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 I, I actually yeah, got to yeah. come to yours, but, you know. I think it's better than the Scots. Oh, did I? <laughs> what was that? Huh? Sorry. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, no, uh, just kidding. But um, one thing, though, that I... Oh, what was I going to say? Fuck. Sometimes I always... Uh, you, you don't, last week you said you don't really... I don't really lose my train of thought. But, I put that seed in your head. Yeah, man. you son of a bitch. Yeah. Phil, what would you say your favorite part of Jiu-Jitsu is? What's, the, what's your favorite part? If you have a favorite. Yeah, no, I mean... Um, uh, my favorite part of, of, of jujitsu is uh, just seeing. I, I I know what I get out of it, yeah. you know, and how good it makes me feel. But so I love uh, I love seeing that in everyone else too, you know. I love yeah. you know I love in between rounds like picking your head up and being like what the fuck, and then yeah. looking around and seeing that same look on you on your face. Oh my god! And be like, bro, what the fuck? You know, like yeah. that was crazy, right? Or like. <laughs> Or like I love after jujitsu, like uh, me and my brother will just sometimes we'll sit in the parking lot for like an hour after jujitsu, just talking shit about the rounds we had nice. and the people in <laughs> class, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think like I mean this isn't necessarily the most most popular uh, opinion, you know. But like I'm a I'm a dad, you know. I'm four I'm forty three. Um, I I feel like uh, you know it, it brings people together, you know. It brings people together, families together, and uh, and it, like I have you know good personal relationship with with people that I which wouldn't have yeah for sure any relationship with at all you know um, through jujitsu people who are, who are much younger than me some people who are older than me you know I've you know guys like like Remo and other police officers who you know I I didn't really have friends who were police officers yeah. before jujitsu you know. Uh, that's uh that's you know something else and like and their their kids you know they bring their kids to jujitsu and they're like you teach them jujitsu and i'm just like bro <laughs> what a responsibility you know what i mean it's, like, a, noble, it's a noble responsibility yeah yeah so i don't know i uh like my brother like my brother and i would talk about this a lot but it's like when you're when you're done with a round or even in the middle of a round if you can show someone something that is really helpful to them whether it just be like conceptually or an actual technique, or just like, here's how I think of this position, or something like that, and they it really helps them. Like you can see on their face, like that it's, it's helping them unlock something, or it's gonna you know, like right away they're gonna be able to use it. I love that. Oh, yeah. <sighs> that I think is the best part. And yeah. you, when in that moment hits right away too, because you're like, oh fuck, in your head you're like, fuck, that's a nice move. Like it was just done. Like yeah. if someone takes your back in a nice way, you're like, oh fuck, that was nice. But now I gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but for you too, have you ever thought that maybe? Because I was drawing this connection when you were talking about how you like maps. Do you think for you, jujitsu is literally just map drawing in your head of what you got to do, transitions, uh, like Dela Hiva to Dela Hiva X or. Uh, single leg X. All right, they peel my foot. Now I got to go to X guard, and you're like sort of creating this little map of where the fuck you need to go. I don't know. Maybe that's why you like it. I don't know. I have to think about that. I have to think about that because that's a little complicated. And I, I don't know. My with the way I, I don't know. I don't know because my jujitsu is changing lately. With the way I like, I used to be much more. Uh, um, I don't want to say counterattack, but. You know what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Re mm. Responsive, yeah. Okay. Is that the right word? I don't know. Reactive. Yeah, I was reactive. Reactive. Yeah, something yeah. like that. All right, to to what was coming. You know, it's like okay, let's see what they're gonna bring, and then I'm gonna see what I can do to counter that. Like what? Okay, what are they looking to do today? Okay, let's work here. You mm -hmm. know, but then like, uh, man, I think the biggest the guy who really changed that in me is Cooper, man. Oh yeah, Scott. Okay. Because you can't wait on Cooper, man. No. 
he will fuck you up. Yeah, like, yeah, he yeah, will just, yeah. if you give, if you like, are like, okay, let's see what Scott's gonna do. Oh, what's Scott's gonna do? You're gonna eat Scott's knee right now. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And then he's gonna, right? And then it's too late to do shit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So after like, you know, the 800th time of just like the most one sided opening to any round with Scott, I was like, okay, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna hand fight very aggressively and try not to end up in the worst position ever against Scott. And, it, and it's, since then, it's uh, he's out, he's helped me elevate my whole game. Right. I can't say that I've always I do better against him all the time. I think right now we get into these crazy entanglements and these crazy positions. It's it's super technical it, as far as like what where our limit is. I'm not gonna say like you know <laughs> some people might be like, Durr. but for me and him like we're <laughs> we're operating at our limit. Like and we get when we get there, like it's it's cool because it's like okay you know we're, now it's like we're in some type of we're in a new entanglement. Now we we got to here last week. Yeah. And this is where we finish. Like now, let's see what we're gonna do from here. But he's totally elevated my game, and that that's happened a bunch of times. Like that's just one example of that. But that's the most recent one, and it's changed my whole my whole game. I really don't wait. No, no, anymore. you well, well, you can't though. But like, anymore. so you're saying the switch with Scott then? Because well, that's good. At least now there, there was now that's a reason. Like you were meant to go with him a lot of times because mm -hmm. now you're growing in your game. Yeah, man, you can't you can't wait on Scott. Next thing you know, he's tripping you, fucking pulling guard, fucking doing everything. Yeah, uh, and his honey hole position is really <laughs> annoying, dude. But <laughs> dude, what? Like, he, you can't play seated guard against Scott and be and be lazy. You, no, you're, you're screwed. And you def this definitely doesn't happen to you, but it happens to me when I roll with him because he always wants you know he, he, the one thing I like about it he wants people to do better, right? Just like um, almost everyone up here. Um, what's it called? Uh, if I'm lazy in my open guard, he'll be like, "Why the fuck did you let me pass?" Like, what the fuck are you doing? But it's like a nice way. He's like, dude, don't do that. Yeah, nice. yeah man. Yeah, no, nah, he's great. We're we'll, we'll talking shit during rounds. Oh, do you, are you a shit talker in while you roll? No, no, no. Oh, I mean, okay. like, in that, in that way, though. Okay, okay, okay. Like, why did you do that for? I'm like, I don't know where the fuck I did that for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I don't really talk shit. Like that's that. that's yeah. one place where I do not talk shit is on the mats. No, no you no. can't. I mean, I'm obviously very new at the whole game, yeah. but I'm a shit talker in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the mats? I'm shut up. No, no, no. Because you, you sort of can't. Because if you shit yeah. talk against someone who is less experienced than you, you're an asshole. <laughs> yeah. But if you shit talk someone who's more experienced than you, you're an asshole. Yeah. Just one asshole's getting killed, the other one's just being yeah. killed. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Now I'm just the opposite. I'll like let people into like my inner workings of my mind too easily. Like I told uh, Cooper one time, he almost got me to go belly down. And I told him, I was like, man. I told I, this is exactly what I said though. I was like, I told myself a long time ago, I'm not gonna let. I shouldn't even say this right now because everyone's gonna try and get me belly down. I'm not gonna like let myself go belly down. Like if it happens, it happens. But I'm never gonna like I, like that's a it's a cardinal rule. I started teaching the kids that like belly down is absolutely zero times can you allow this to happen. It's just the worst, right? Yep. But people will try to force you there. Yeah. And it's easy to get caught there if you're not like thinking about it all the time. Oh yeah. So I told Cooper that and he's got to get me belly down. Uh, <laughs> like every round <laughs> that he can now from like from then till now. And I'm like, man, I ain't telling him shit anymore. Yeah, but now yeah, I just yeah, told yeah. everybody. Uh, right. Dude, you should, you, you should like dumb. definitely you should set him up. You should you should have a counter in your head and be like, <laughs> Hey bro, just don't try to like pull Dalahi yeah. on me and then just sit back. <laughs> I mean, it's a good rule. Don't go belly down. Yeah, no, I didn't think. I think it's pretty generic. But hey, man, he took it personally. <laughs> Bro, you know, you, you go belly down a lot until you fucking realize that someone's just gonna choke you out. Belly There's down. No way out. You know? Dude, it's the worst position. If there is the top two worst positions in jujitsu to be in, from a uh, one man to another man, right? So demoralizing. <laughs> no, seriously, is either mount yeah. or when they got you mounted on like belly down. Right. It's so demoralizing. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's also a good thing too. Because I think that takes away your ego. Because after where you're like, fuck, dude, another man, if he wanted to, could have just ended me right then and there. And that allows you, though, to realize, okay, this is what I need to work on. And it was just a simulation or, you know, around. And now I'm going to get better. Hmm. You know, I don't know. I just, I feel like. I've been in some positions, like, where I'm like, wow, I'd be fucked right now if this was a real yeah, fight. Where yeah. <laughs> oh, you're like, I can't move. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, man, you get like stuck in a crucifix or like, yeah. uh, I love rolling with uh, Metal Mike because he's, uh, you know, he's got a mind towards MMA. So when he gets to a position where he could strike you, he, he kind of settles that. And it's like, you know, like, man, I, he would be kicking my, he would just be yeah, yeah, yeah. shit out of me right now <laughs> yeah, yeah. if we were, weren't on the jiu-jitsu match, man. Fucking, uh, you know who came to mind when you said that is um, Bobby. Bobby Wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
dude, every time he gets me and like has like a like a collar tie, right? I'm just like, dude, he just puts his other hand on my neck and just starts raining on me. I'm fucked, <laughs> dude. So, so your your brown belt now. How often do you recommend training? Oof. All right, here's a yeah. So this is another thing that I'm I'm toying with right now, right? Um, you have to you have to play with it, man. You have to play with it. I'm 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 tweaking this all the time. I'm tra I'm training five days a week now. Okay. Um, Has it always been that way? No, no. When I was a uh, when I was a white belt, I tried to train a lot. You know, I would double up on classes um and do like four days a week you know and uh i pushed it a lot and then i was always like somewhere between three and four days you know right. and i used to have this i don't know i've been training for too long now i guess but i used to say have this saying where i was like okay you know the sweet spot is between three and four you know i can hit three classes a week every week and i'll be fine some day some weeks if i'm feeling great i'll hit a fourth class but if i hit a fourth class like three or four weeks in a row I'm like gonna be pushing it. I'm gonna be hurting. Yeah. But I'm way past that now. Like that's gotcha. not an issue. You know. So I don't know if that was like a plateau for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I when I started jujitsu, I was I weighed a lot more. I, I my heaviest was like two thirty, but I wasn't two thirty when I started jujitsu because I had been like walking and like doing some oh, other shit. Yeah, dude. What are you right now? <laughs> well, like I try to stay at one seventy and not go so low. Like, Sixty yeah. pounds. Yeah, dude. Yeah, be what six four. I'm six two. Six two. Yeah, yeah, six two. What What was the um? So you said when you weren't that much because you were walking. So what was the catalyst that? All right, I gotta lose weight. Oh, I mean, that's. I was just, you know, I mean, like, you know, I'm sweaty all the time. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, like it's gross, man. You know, I, 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 I don't want to talk shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it. I, I didn't feel good about myself. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Sure. Like everyone has it. You know, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be like too judgmental about it, right? But for me, it was like, dude, you know. And this isn't true. I was just thinking about this today, right? Because the, the, the name of Remo's episode was something like, it's never too late. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Change your life or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yourself accountable. Right, right. Uh, and that's true, man. It's never too late. But I, that, it, but I started telling myself, like, it is going to be too late soon. Like, I started telling myself, like, you're, the, the clock is ticking, you know? Like, you got, you can't, you know, and I didn't think I was going to, I did not think that I was going to be, like, you know, uh, a diehard jujitsu guy who, who yeah. loved the train and who was like, you know, doing stuff at home to try to like supplement the training and like do, trying to do like, you know, keep himself healthy with kettlebells and other types of mobility work and yoga and like all the, I never thought that was, I, I, that was like, I just thought, okay, man, you know, let's get in some shape, you know, maybe if you can't, if you can't fight, maybe you could run, you know, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't know. At least you can run fast. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like something, man, something, you know, because I just knew I wasn't in the field anymore doing surveys and uh, I wasn't hiking and really physical because my kids are super, super young, so I couldn't go like on long hikes with it, you know, or anything like that. So I was like, ah, I got to do something, I got to do something, man. And like, I kept thinking, you know, martial, I loved martial arts, you know, I loved karate when I did it. And I loved judo. We did, we, I did like a mixed martial arts. I took uh, <clears throat> I took classes at a mixed martial arts academy. It was um, and it's not mixed martial arts like MMA like with the rules like in that it was really three martial arts that were mixed. The guy was a black belt in judo. He was a black belt in karate in uh in Okinawa karate. I used to know all the names and everything. I'm sorry, but and now and he was a black belt in more than one Japanese style of jujitsu. Hmm. And he took those arts. His name is uh, Vincent Marchetti. He took those three arts and he combined them. And he was a heavy, he was a very experienced uh, boxer as well. Oh shit, yeah, wow. Yeah, like amateur fighter. And he took all those arts, he put them together, he called it Michi Bururu, which roughly translates to like the way of street fighting. Okay. And, uh, and he went and he got it sanctioned like in the old school way. And he used to say, and I don't, I, you know, I don't know how you would find this out, but he used to say that, you know, he and Bruce Lee were the only ones who created a new style and you know a new new style through the sanctioning of the traditional masters like you know what i mean he had this huge charter on his wall with like all these signatures and stuff yeah um it's fucking awesome it was cool man but it was very heavy karate when we did judo it was like a lot of fit-ins and then throwing the crash pad it wasn't a lot of randori mm -hmm. sparring you know and all the jujitsu was like small joint manipulation and stand-up positions Hmm. Um, so is, is that the difference between Japanese and Brazilian Japanese is standing couldn't say it was just his way of doing it okay because we had it was like if I had to say it was probably 85% karate 
in the three years or so that I was there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 10% judo and then some like small joint manipulation from standing to maybe get into judo or to like, you know, wrist locks from standing, get some nasty shit like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, And just, you know, manipulating like hands behind the the back. He liked to do police training. Okay, cool. And stuff like that. So he was a a cool guy. Um, He's an interesting, interesting old school guy, you know, like, uh, it's like old school uh, sensei, right? He had like all these Corvettes and stuff, you know? He's like, he's, a, he's nice. an interesting character, right? He passed away a few years ago. Oh, sounds like John Cruz. Who's that? <laughs> I'm a Cobra guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. about to say, yeah. this sounds like a movie yeah, type yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he was cool. He was like, yeah, you know, he was he was, he was different, you know? And it was and it was cool. And it, but it was much different than what we were doing here. And when I when I was like, I want to do martial arts again, and I was super into, I, I love samurai shit. Do you, do you like sword stuff? No, but uh, I was like, I was looking in for that, right? And yeah. I was looking for like, and I was like, oh, I could find, I need Japanese jujitsu. Like, why? I don't know. I had it, it's some stupid thing in my head. But finally, I was like, let me just go see what these guys on the block are about. Yeah. And uh, I remember, like, I had I had seen UFC, me and my friends had, like, done grappling and stuff in the basement, like, trying to mimic what we saw in the early UFC stuff, you know? So, like, I only knew enough to be like minimally dangerous to myself, right? <laughs> and uh, but I remember like just whatever move we were working that day, like I lo- I just fucking loved it. I just love. I-, I I can't remember what what it was, but um, just the idea of like drilling a technique back and forth, yeah. and then like and then the sparring, it was just uh, I was hooked, man. Go ahead, right? Yeah, fuck yeah. That that that's the theme, really. I think is just fucking you go, you do, and you just fall in love. I honestly. I don't even know where that part of the conversation started. Well, I don't. But, I don't know either. I don't know. <laughs> I, but this yeah, is good. Bending up in the same place. Yo, yeah. perfect. Hell, yo, dude. That's 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 part of the conversation, man. You, yeah. I let you let it go. You, that's why before when you said, oh, "I'm sorry that I'm taking, dude." This is your show. This is nah. this is about you, baby. Awesome. Uh, actually, there is one thing I want to touch upon. Uh, let's take a, a step away from jujitsu for a moment. Yeah. But the survey, right? Yeah. Because. You essentially started off as a surveyor, right? Then you said you went to corporate, and essentially now you're you're an entrepreneur, right? You're an entrepreneur. Right. You have your own business. Right, right. That's a huge step. I think that's probably. I mean, I, I we listen. Me, Don, and I listen to a lot of like podcasts, and one of them is a, a guy who's an entrepreneur. And the the common theme is is how hard entrepreneurship is. So that's like a big feat. What what was that driving force that you just said like, like because because a lot of people in our society they get they move up the ladder right mm-hmm. the corporate ladder mm-hmm. and even if they don't like it they go ah but there's security and they stay there and then they start to deteriorate was it part of your burning the the what was it the tree the branch or the wood yeah yeah the deadwood i mean deadwood. any of those guys you're talking about who stayed on the corporate path if you're hiring give me a call no, I'm just, I'm <laughs> 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 um, you know it's like um I was, yeah, I, so I fit that mold, you know, um, 100%, you know, I thought, I really, really thought, I don't know what I was thinking, and I, again, you're, you're fooling yourself, right, you, you know better somewhere in your heart of hearts or whatever you want to call it, right, but you fool yourself into thinking that, all right, I'm going to graduate college, I'm going to get a sweet job, I'm going to, you know, keep working, getting promotions, working my way up, you know, and uh, that's it. Like, I'm just going to be happy doing that, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, that's, I'm just going to be, I don't know, like, I'll be done, mm-hmm. you know, like how, uh, Rogan talks about how he used to think, he looks at people and he thinks that that's just how they were all the time, or that's how they are, and he forgets that they were, like, babies, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 I was thinking, uh, that's so crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that exact Well, we all watch it and listen to a lot of the same true, things, true. especially when it comes to this, because true. I'm right on board with this, like, Rogan was an inspiration, and he, he's one of the guys that made yeah. me, like, feel like, this is bullshit, you know, what I'm doing yeah. here, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you can wake up and be the hero of your own movie. Is what yeah, no, about. right on. You know, when I, dude, I, when I was first going to jiu-jitsu, I was listening to all that stuff, just eating it up, nice. all those videos on YouTube, you know, and like that stuff is so powerful. Um, and really, that yeah, that's what, it, you know, I, I kept like thinking, okay, you know, I'm not satisfied here because they're not doing things the way I like to do them in this way or in that way. So I'm going to move to this next company. I'll get a little paid a little more. I'll get a little bit better of a position and then we're going to change the way it's done and do it the way I think it should be done. And then, you know, and then there'll be some other problem I have with them. And then I'll move on to the next thing. And it happens so often that like, when I, like I have a resume, dude, it's so long. It's so ridiculous. I have like nine places of, of employment and wow. surveying, you know, and then my own business, you know? So it's like that. 
it's like it's they've all been positive moves mm -hmm. yet you know i mean at some point you want to settle in with a company and like reap the reward you know it's like okay how many times am i going to start a new job and only have like two weeks vacation you know it's like yeah. the other guys who are you know been around for a while they're, they're going away for a month with their family like yeah. fuck yeah you know and just bullshit like that and it's like it doesn't necessarily look good that you're going from place to place and i think a lot of people a lot of guys are really restless and they like find somewhere in their life to like uh exercise that like uh that i don't know like they need to like that outlet right for mm -hmm. me it was just like this job sucks i'm going to the next job for some people it's like my wife sucks i'm gonna go you know what i mean like or or my house sucks or yeah. my car sucks or like go you know what i mean it could be more or less drastic depending on where their their what their outlet is right but mm -hmm. for me it was like okay i'm gonna get another fucking job these people suck this guy's an asshole you know, no one appreciates me, you know, and go to the next, and it just was like, you know, and then I, and I totally ended up in a place, you know, I was like, I was literally director of operations for like a 35 person land surveying and aerial mapping firm. Like the, one of the biggest firms in the state, one that was like in the trade magazines that I was reading when I was like going to college to be a surveyor. Like, holy shit, it'd be awesome to even work for this company one day. I was running the company. It was the owners wow. who were brothers, who were the sons of the guy who started the company in the 60s, and then me. They were the only guys wow. I reported to. Yeah. And I fucking hated it. Wow. I fucking hated it, bro. I was going to networking meetings. Like, I would get back from, like, a breakfast. Like, like the, everybody knew. Everybody knew. Like, at the in these networking meetings, or in these, like, like, like what they weren't networking meetings, right? That's how my company would view them. Mm -hmm. What they were were... Um, trade shows or like seminars or things of that nature uh and all of our clients would go there to like try to learn something right gotcha. <laughs> and like we would go to be like hey uh what's going on with that uh, route 17 uh, roundabout project you got coming up don't forget us on that you know i yeah, know you're yeah. gonna need a bbe and uh, you know we got the certification so just give me a call you know and that's like <laughs> so like i would come back from these breakfast first of all everybody there knew that the guys from my company would show up, network until the breakfast, quick eat, and go to fuck home <laughs> and leave. <laughs> and uh, right, and like yeah. that's and there'd be a table that would be empty. You know what I mean? And, yeah. Like no, and we were never there. <laughs> and so that was just what they expected of you, man. And like I would come home from, I would come back to the office from some of these, and maybe like my boss couldn't make that one because he was at another one or he, you know, he had a meeting or something. Like I said, I only had two bosses. But he, the one owner, would be like. So, uh, oh, you sat next to Sam? Oh, okay, cool. What did he say about this uh, Route 9 project? And I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, his kids are doing good, you know? He just went and got back from vacation. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm just trying, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to, like, yeah. be a human being. Yeah. You know? And, like, so it's either I could, like, put on this costume and be who he wanted me to be, right? Or I could, like, not do the job to the level that he wanted me to do it. But it was, like, it was just making me sick. It was making me physically ill. Wow. Yeah. Like, I would wake up and, be, and like, wretch. Like, I wanted to vomit, but I had nothing in my stomach. Yeah, I'd have to go to the bathroom, or I'd be late to these things. Like, huh. my body wouldn't let me go. You know what I mean? It was, like, it, like it was absolutely crazy. I started having problems with anxiety. Like, I, I you know, I knew, okay, this is fucking anxiety. I'm having, like, anxiety attacks. You know what I mean? Like, Jeez. shit like that. And that's what was, like, no, fuck this, man. I cannot, I cannot, like, be someone I'm not. Fuck this. You know what I mean? I yeah. can't do it. You know, and so I just, uh, you know, I didn't make it sound easy, but I just kind of was like, fuck this. And I, I, I'd had my own business years before, and then when things got bad, I kind of sold all my shit and went and worked for another company again, and then was in, in that for a while. So I just went and did it again. Called up my old clients, called up a bunch of people, just, just fucking started doing it. And, you know, I'm not, you know, an entrepreneur sounds so grand, you know what I mean? It's like, I work from home in my basement, you know what I mean? Uh, I put my shit in my little, like, uh, Toyota SUV and I drive it out to sites and, and measure shit, but you know, um, I don't have anybody to answer to really except for my, to myself. You yeah, know? So that's you know. the most important person you have to answer to. How long have you been in business now? Uh, so for yourself? yeah, I started my company back up in 2017. Okay. And then uh, I, had, I almost made the same mistake twice. <laughs> it's been a rocky road. And I started my own business in 2007. Got it. And, and uh, Right from the get go, like the bottom fell out. That was like the worst time for everything. The economy was so garbage. And after like three or four years of slugging it out, hiring people, firing people, like, or laying people off, really, not firing yeah. anyone ever. Um, it, I was just like heartbroken and like wasn't getting anywhere. And like I had 
to try to like keep the business afloat, I chased a shit ton of work that I just hated. Just like real rat race, crappy work yep. for low, you know, it, it, like my whole business was just work I didn't want. And I was just like, oh, this is awful. So I, I, uh, I called around, I was looking for a job. And there was only one place that had any work. And I went, I worked for them and they were great. And I ended up working for them for a while. And uh, I worked for two other places. I shut my business down and then I sold them all my gear. They bought even bought the truck I was driving. It was awesome. And I went and I worked for them for like three years. And uh, then I went to another place and another place. That's where I was when I, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I went back gotcha. to 2017. Uh, and then, so um, in 2017, I started my own business and things are going good. And I had this one client who was just really giving me a lot of work. And they were, they were like, what they wanted me to come work for them. And I didn't want to go work for them, but little by little, through a whole bunch of ridiculous scenarios, they kind of like dragged me in, yeah. you know? And I had this relationship with them where I was stuck working for them. And uh, I ended up dragging my buddy Brian into it. And, uh, but then when COVID happened, like they, and basically I was working for them full time. Mm -hmm. And I was just about to shut my business down again. I even started selling my equipment. Huh. And then COVID happened and just sent everybody home. And they sent us home. And then they figured out that me and my buddy Brian were like the highest paid guys in the department. They got rid of us and replaced us with some poor bastard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. I felt so bad for Sorry, it. the way you said that, that was funny. so bad, <laughs> dude. And it was like, uh, I remember my buddy Brian, who's now my business partner. We just, uh, at first we were just like, fuck surveying, man. We're not doing surveying anymore. Fuck this shit. I was like, I'm just going to be a consultant. I'm going to figure something out. Maybe I'll sell some survey gear. Maybe I'll, just, like, maybe I'll just like put myself out there as like a corporate consultant writing proposals or something, which is like, I say that right now, and that's crazy. <laughs> um, and then, but that was like on Friday. And then by like Saturday afternoon, it was like, well, you know, maybe we could do surveys, you know? And it was like, <laughs> by like Sunday, I was like, all right, tomorrow, we're going to grind, rebuy the gear that I just sold. Nice. And we're going to get in. And yeah, we just started doing it. And that was that. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we've been, and, and it's like, we were talking about it a few weeks later, and it was like, man, we should send those guys fucking flowers for firing us, you know? Yeah. Like, they, cause, that was almost yeah, like the best thing. It was the best thing. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's not easy, dude. Like, I just, like, I have, I don't have any work right now. Like, for the past, like, two or three weeks, I've been dead. I, I'm so happy to be going out and doing a job tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. You know, it is what it is, man. I'm, I, you give up some security, but you gain so much. You know? Well, you also gain mental clarity, too. You, you're yourself again. Dude, you and your, your, and your partner, yeah. Brian. You're yourselves again. Yeah. You're not fucking going and being like trying to kiss ass or, or what's what's the status on Route fucking nine. No, you're going and you're helping a customer. Yeah. You're helping them do something. Right. Like you get to be you. That's 100%. even better. So even if you're not being you every day of the month because there's no security, well, there is security now in your mental state. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, man. That's dope. Is uh, winter time like a slow time of year for surveying? It seems like uh, the last few years it's been pretty slow, it, and it could be slow for like a bunch of reasons. It could gotcha. be slow because of the weather, because if you get a foot of snow, it's like, well, some so you do some work, other work you have to just wait. It just yeah. really depends. And then, um, and when and it's just, it seems like when it does snow, people are just like, I'm not going to order a survey right now. <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, let me decide what I can and can't do in the snow. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but this year it was it's just slow out. Of, it's just been slow out of uh, nowhere. Last year it was slow because of Omicron. I feel like everybody okay. like everything was fucked up because of that. No, it's hard to predict or know. It's, it's the why. most unpredictable times right now. That's yeah, for sure. Exactly. So I try not to like worry about it too much. Um, yeah, you know, I try not to worry about it too much. But it's a tall order. I've been pretty worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but dude, it'll be good. You know, like like you said, that's ebbs and flows, right? And everything, yeah, you'll, you'll get all your work done. Um, do you have any, because you, you keep saying you're in the woods, you're in the woods, you're in the woods. Do you have any crazy stories about being in the woods? Like any like bear encounter or something <laughs> or something crazy? Some weirdo in the fucking woods just chilling? I don't know. I've never had anything really crazy happen. I've run into bears, you know what I mean? And and that's kind of, that just like, that just like gets your heart pumping like so yeah. fast, bro. You know, like and it's, it's scary, yeah, you know, because sure. you just know. It's like, okay, what, which way they turn and what they're up, what they're feeling like today is going to, you know dictate how the rest of my day, yeah. maybe the rest of my month goes, yeah. right? like maybe the rest of my life, I don't know, right? For so, sure. Um, but I've been lucky, it's never, I've never had any like actual really close encounters uh, with any bears. Good, good. I see more bears in my house in Rockaway than I do, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> <It's just chilling. laughs> than I do surveying. And I, I, you know, and I've learned how to deal with that. Like I make a lot of noise when I'm in the woods, I whistle, I clap, you yeah. know. Um, and, and you know, there's not much deep woods left, man. Like you see, you're more likely to see a bear in a suburban neighborhood than in the woods sometimes, it feels, okay. you know, True. pretty pretty weird um 
You know, most of the most of the crazy stuff that happens with surveying is like people related. You know, like people are just dickheads sometimes. You know, people can take real can be really offended for no reason. You know, really? that you're like near their property or like cause, you oh, know I see. when you're doing a survey, you're um you're trying to figure out where your property is, but you know the edge of your property is the edge of someone else's property. Right? Yeah, and that's where the markers are. So I'm up in the bush in the front of your house, you know, in front of your lot, like, you know, digging around in your bush. And people are like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, you know, or sometimes markers are in weird places, you know, um, where the roads bend, they'll put a concrete marker, like, you know, on the side of the road at that bend point. And there's, you know, a whole geometry and, and map information that's related to that physical location. It could be right in the middle of your lawn. Yeah. You know, here I am with a metal detector, you know, like on your oh, lawn, man. right? You know, what is this guy it's doing? like, it's like, when's the last time I shaved? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. What do I look like out there? It's cold. I'm all bundled up. You know what I mean? And Bro, what a sight to see, though. Yeah. Imagine, like, to see Phil with a metal detector. I would pay for that. <laughs> you know, well, you, you know, I'm expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm gonna find your mom's property corner. You can just check check that out. Yeah, dude. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on my next door neighbor's property, being like, "Who the fuck are you?" Who's yeah, this guy? Yeah. So actually, do you do surveying commercial, residential, both? I do both. Um, most of the work I do uh, lately is residential, but it's all it's like, almost all of it is related to um, like some upcoming projects. You know, so if you're gonna gotcha. do an addition or a deck or a fence or a patio or tear down the house and put up a new one or something like that okay. those are the jobs i usually go after you know because my background is um surveying for engineering mm -hmm. gotcha you know so they're surveying for buying a house and uh the back let's just say like the that i don't want to say it's the low end but it's not as you know there's not as much involved as doing a survey that is going to be used for engineering it's not going to involve elevations and spot grades and ground contours mm -hmm. utility information like a whole and so that is my niche like that's what i've always done i've always gotcha. i've been a surveyor but i've always worked for engineering companies until i started my own yeah. survey company cool well if anybody listening needs a survey <laughs> let us know we'll there contact you, you with phil Talk yeah. it up. Oh, yeah. it up. gotta get this guy to work work <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it, man. work in the winter yeah, yeah, i'm yeah, happy phone's ringing this week it's good stuff yeah good hell stuff. yeah fuck yeah love it um, you know, every time now I say fuck yeah, dude, I just think of you. I swear to God, every time I say fuck it yeah, is your, you, it is your, you have to get t shirts. Yeah, like, but I get know, fuck yeah, fuck hell yeah. yeah. We definitely yeah, do. Like, dude, literally, we're we'll the debut one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were joking before you came. My mom was like, oh, look, we can try to get you on this thing, and then uh, you just have to dumb it down a bit. And we're like, what do you mean? And like, oh, maybe not curse. And I'm like, well, Donald be okay, <laughs> but like, you wouldn't hear me. Like, I'd be fucking just be a silent podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, we'll think I'm here with Don show. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, um, want to get, I think it's time for the yeah, questions. The questions the, yeah. bam, that's our transition <laughs> to the question. I we really need to get some fucking shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, we need an audio engineer. We do. Uh, if you, any of you are audio engineers and just want to be part of the team, yeah. Really cool shit, and if anybody know. wants to edit videos and edit clips and social media stuff for free, um, just to you know get some experience under your belt, uh, we are open to that. So we'll the pay, opportunity is there. We'll pay <laughs> some <laughs> whiskey and beer. <laughs> yeah, but, I am bourbon. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. Well, all right. So, Remo will pay you in pasta. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. We all know what he'll do for some time. Oh, <laughs> oh god. That's fucking priceless. Alright, so we got some good yo dude questions came in fast as fuck when I fucking oh, did this. Yeah. Like, oh, that makes me nervous or not. Oh dude, they're gonna be great. <laughs> um so some uh, I don't know how to work Instagram. Here we go. Okay. Let's start with the first question. Mike Amore from Pierre, what's up, Mike? Best thing learned from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. What up, Mike? Uh all right, um, I was just saying this to someone the other day. I think the best thing learned that I've learned from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is uh, a, con a concept, and I don't, I don't I, I'm sure maybe it has a name, I don't know. But this, uh, this concept that you want to identify the weakness in your game and then make it your strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then repeat, right? And, um, that's kind of what I was doing when I went to jujitsu. So I don't know. I think it's just maybe coincidence, right? Because mm -hmm. I learned this after when I was in jujitsu. Mm -hmm. But you know, 
in a practical way, you know, uh, I was getting absolutely destroyed. I would like obtain, uh, I would get, you know, taken down or, or somebody would be about to pass my guard and I would get like a, a bullshit half guard, you know, like a quote unquote half guard where your guards half pass, right? You know, yeah. um, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was just getting like wrecked, just wrecked over and over and over again. I didn't know why. And I had, and, and uh, it was just, you know, it was my shittiest position. And then um, Dave Ross and Eddie, who trains over there, he's up top. Mm -hmm. um, and he trains with Dave Ross and he's been putting videos out. Uh, his name's like Sweaty Eddie on, uh, on Instagram. Oh, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jay Ronan. Yeah, those guys are great. Yeah. Uh, and Sweaty Eddie's great. And Dave, I only know Dave because Sweaty Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> they like, uh, Dave had just started core at that time. And uh, I would go there on a Saturday. It would be like me and Dave and Eddie and like maybe like one or two other people. And they literally, the nicest guys, man. They literally would make the lesson what I needed. For, you know what I mean? Like, it, I, and I wasn't aware of that initially, but it, mm. I caught on gotcha. afterwards. Yeah. It was like, okay, these guys are teaching some, like they're teaching this half guard, you know, uh, these con conceptual half guard, you know, where to put my hands, where to get into my feet, how to, how to react to this, how to react to that, what to expect, et cetera. They're making it about me. They're teaching me what to do here. They're giving me options. And uh, it really, now I'm in, I'm in bottom half guard, like, you know, like people, it's good luck. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not not so easy anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. People who are, you know, people pass my shit, you know what I mean? But it's a, it's a stronger position for me. And then I was like, okay, well now what? Now I'm really getting stuck all the time. And yeah. Then I find that thing. Gotcha. And then I figure out how to work that my strength. And it's and you could do that in your life. Like it's so easy to take that and apply it to everything. Mm -hmm. You know what's what sucks. What's not great. What where's the hole in your game? Yeah. You know what I mean. Are you going to bed too late? Are you not getting up early enough? Are you eating too much? Are you eating too little? Are you exercising enough? Are you not actually you know are you exercising too much? You know which is rarely the case, but it can happen, right? Yeah. You know, uh, your mobility sucks, right? Your flexibility sucks. Like, what's the hole in your game? When my back got hurt as a white belt, I couldn't do any jujitsu. I started doing yoga. And now people are like, feel so flexible. <laughs> That's crazy. No, I'm not. <laughs> like, yeah. I wasn't, you know, I am now. Yeah. I'm really flexible because I took a weakness and I put made it into a strength, you yeah. know? And between the half guard position and that, I was like, wait a minute, you know, I like, I was like, this is like, this is the same idea, right? Yeah. It's the same idea. And then you hear, uh, you know, other people have spoken about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's definitely a concept you've heard about before. And I think it's so true, you know, and it's just, uh, if you could take your weakness and make it your strength and then find your next week, eventually you're just gonna, you know, I don't know, where's your hole gonna be? Yeah. You know, it's gonna like get that. smaller and smaller and smaller. I like that a lot. That's you know? powerful, uh, a powerful answer. Yeah, you're constantly growing. Love that. Hell yeah. Great answer. Brendan Camps, if you were to live in any other country for the rest of your life, where would it be and why? Oh, man. So if it has to be for the rest of my life, right, then it means I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to stay. I'm going to just get stuck there, right? Yeah. Uh, that's tough, man, because, like, I'm scared of going somewhere. Uh, I just probably should say scared, but I guess that's the truth. I'm scared of the idea of going somewhere where I just don't speak the language and I'd be like a total, like, is target the right word? You know what I mean? Like I'd stand out as someone who could just yeah, be vulnerable. Right, you know what I mean? Like I just feel like, uh, I don't know, like when you, when you from a neighborhood or you're from a place and someone comes who's not from your place, you're like, who the fuck's this guy? Right? True. And it's like, maybe he's a punk, right? Maybe yeah. he's, maybe he's a uh, easy target, right? So, you know, and I'm not saying everyone's like that, but some people are like that, no, right? No. And so, and when you're so out of sorts, uh, you don't, and this is the way I imagine it, because I've never fucking gone anywhere, so. <laughs> I went to Puerto Rico for my sister's wedding, and I was like on the resort the whole time. Like, I, everybody understood what I was saying. There was no problems. So, you know, whatever. Uh, but I would imagine that, you know, it would be disorientating, disorientating enough to not be able to understand anyone and oh, have yeah. them not understand you, that you would, you know, be an easy uh, victim. And that's just something I guess I'm paranoid of. Um, with mm -hmm. that being said, you know, I would look, if I had to go, you know, to only one place, I'd want to go to some place. Uh, I want to make like a spiritual journey. You know what ah, I mean? I like that. Like I want to go like to India or I want to go somewhere where I could sit with like a Buddhist master or like Dude, someone like that yeah, and like yeah. really, really, you know what I mean? And spend the time, because 
like I, you know, I'm kind of like, um, I like this idea that exists in like, uh, in yoga philosophy and, uh, I don't know, Indi maybe it's Indian culture, maybe it's not, uh, but, but the idea is that, you know, the first 20 years of your life, you're learning the second 20 years of your life, you're kind of like producing then from 40 to 60 is your spiritual journey. And then after 60, you just fuck off in the woods and die really. You just go do your thing. You're out. You have no responsibilities. You're done. Now I'm not saying I want to bounce on my grandkids cause I'm looking forward to, yeah, I love yeah. family. It, it, yeah, and yeah. I think that's like, I can't, uh, I can't get away from that. But, uh, like I'm, I'm past 40 and all of a sudden like these, like this tug towards spirituality has come so strong. So interesting. And it's like, man, you know, like, yeah, I'm ready. Like my friend Rob and I, we always joke that, uh, that we're going to end up in a cave. Like we're going to end up <laughs> chilling out in a cave, like, yeah. you know, listening to reggae on like one early, early iPod, you know, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like chilling out and, uh, and meditating and not doing shit and just hanging out in some rags and doing nothing, you know, just live out where no one can fuck with us and we don't have to deal with any bullshit, you know? That's fucking hilarious. Do you uh, meditate right now? Yeah. What kind of meditation do you do? All kinds. I do all different shit. Um, right now, um, I've been reading this book. It's um, I think it's called Dynamic Thought. Interesting. And uh, there's specific specific meditations in that book okay. that are pretty cool. Um, and it's a it's a book that's heavy on like visualization. And oh, uh, I gotta read this. Yeah, yeah you would yeah. definitely like it, man. For sure. I, um, I've been doing. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of frequencies mm. lately. I don't know if you're into that at all. Um, like 432 hertz and 528 hertz. Dude, like the that. 432 hertz, yo, in the morning when I read, I have that shit playing low. It's it's amazing. Soothing. It'll, you know, you do that and, and on top of like visualizing at the same time. Yeah. It trips you out, man. If you do that for like <laughs> yeah. a half hour, yeah, you feel like you're in another world. You do. Yeah. And if you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, go to YouTube and yeah, type yeah. in 432 hertz uh, sound and do a loop. But yeah. Um, so it was called uh, dynamic dynamic um, thought. Yeah, sorry, I just had okay. I, was gonna no say, I was gonna say the author's name actually. I probably should do that. But um, so I've been doing those just this week. I started uh, doing those because it's it's like a it, the way the book is set up is is like a twelve week course. Nice. So it's like in week one, I'm just trying to. It's called. Uh, it's from by Henry Thomas Hamlin. And it's okay. like an old book. It's like 1920. It's like a 1920, I think. And uh, my buddy Rob really highly recommended it, and uh, I I just got into it. And I'm like. Nice. Enthralled, yeah, um, nice. but I do. I I've I like all kinds of meditating. I will do. Sometimes I will just sit. I have a timer on my phone. Um, it's a you know a timer app, and so sometimes I'll set it up with like a background noise, like a like a ohm chant, or like rain sound is kind of cool. And I'll do interval bells at like either five minutes or ten minutes. So just like so I know like is this thing on or like where am I at? Yeah. You know, I don't want to be distracted by like where am I at, okay. you know, and that and I shouldn't be. I should just let that go, obviously, right? But right now it distracts me, and so to, to co combat that, I kind of throw in those things. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'll do that sometimes. But sometimes I'll just do it with nothing. I'll just set. I'll just be like, okay, what time is it? All right, I'll close my eyes and I'll start. I'll just sit. Um. Sometimes I like Ram Das has some good meditations that are available online. Um. I like the chant. Uh. They call it chanting, but I do it silently. So I don't mm -hmm. know. Technically, I think that's still chanting, but um, I like to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. I went pretty deep with the Hare Krishna stuff for <laughs> probably like two is years. It, is it is that like a short mantra you could share? Or yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's our Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And those are just the names. Wow. Of, it's just the names that's of God. Cool. It's just oh, the names of God. Shit. Yeah, it's just Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna is God, Rama is God, uh -huh. right? And Hare is like the union of the male and female versions of. Uh, aspects of God, kind of. Okay. So it's it's way more complicated than that, but no, 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 for sure. You know, I'm not an expert. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know, man. Like I got into the Hare Krishna stuff, and I'm I I'm like a big. I, I believe in reincarnation. Hundred percent. Yeah. Now and uh, and I, I mean the mantra was one of the things that helped me believe in it because it's like these words make total sense, bro. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, I've done this before. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like and that sounds so weird. Maybe I don't know how that sounds no, to people. No, 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 not at all. But man, it's like that is is real you know what if the soul from your past life benefited so well from spirituality and meditation that's why it's pulling you back that's exactly a hundred percent part of it, that is something that's written about in the Bhagavad Gita really a hundred percent that any effort made towards your spirit on your spiritual journey is never wasted even if you were to close your eyes to God again 
or you were to fall back into this like material mode of, of being or living before you died and you didn't reach, you know, this perfected state, you will be born like into a family that meditates. You'll be born wow. into, or you'll, you'll be born and somehow in your next life, you'll feel this calling and you'll pick kind of pick up yeah. where you left off. You'll have this opportunity to pick up where you left That's off. That's amazing. It's Dude, never a waste. so cool. Yeah, it's never, cause, cause so, it's discouraging to be like, well, you know, yeah, I'm going to live all these thousands of lives. Like, uh, what's the chances that this one's going to be one where I figure it all out? Yeah. You know, and attain enlightenment. It's probably yeah, not. True. It's probably not. Right. right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, it can be discouraging, but the idea that you're always just making progress yeah, on your journey, sure. you know, there's a lot of stuff in, uh, in, in yoga in bhakti yoga, what, what I kind of, that's what they call bhakti, the higher Krishnas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Technically it's bhakti yoga. Now, can you go from your understanding? You just said that if you know if you did if you did so well that you didn't attain this now you'll be you know brought back and reincarnated to a family that meditates. Is there an opposite effect too? Like let's just say you fuck up, then yeah. you come back into something less that you need to learn a lesson to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's that's what they believe in. That's 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 karma, you know. Shit, yeah. And mm -hmm. they say you know karma is like a natural law. Like it's not a punishment. It just is what it is, man. Okay. You know? It just is what it is. It's just a, a natural law of the universe. Like yeah. Krishna, God is not subject to karma. Yeah. But he's also isn't controlling it necessarily. You know okay. what I mean? It's mechanisms yeah. that are that are set and they just go. This is the way the universe just works. The way it is, yeah. yeah. Holy shit, dude! I just recently watched a video, um, kind of very similar to all this stuff, and it was about how our DNA is carried down through generations, and how as when you're born, sometimes you have deja vu, and deja vu is really just an old memory that somebody else had. I was thinking about this when I was listening to Remo's conversation yes. on the way here, when you were talking about yeah. your thoughts, so you, you know, get, you get I, ju I just yeah. learned this whole concept because it, that DNA, there's DNA in you from as old as the universe, 14 billion years. Yeah, dude. So like sometimes when you have, uh, you know, like I said, a certain thought or emotion or something like, oh, this just feels right. Maybe you've already done that before. Maybe not you, but your DNA, the DNA that's in you has done that before in a previous life or time. So now, what? Because I, I want to know yeah. what your thoughts yeah, on no, deja vu I, are. Because well, I mean, I think there's two things at play, right? So like we're in these physical bodies, right? Mm -hmm. And these physical bodies are absolutely, you know, made of of material matter, right? And and like there's definitely shit that's passed down generationally, you know, through through family. You know, it's like anxieties and fears and all kinds of stuff like that. I, I feel like that's just in in your body. Right, but like we're not our body, you know. We're our soul. So it's like where is so that when you, so when you started talking about, you know, the voice in your head, I immediately started thinking about that nagging voice. It's like you yeah. know you're not good enough. Da, 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 you know all yeah. these other things and th these unhelpful things. And and I feel like so much of that is just like your body. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's just like the way your your brain works and and how shit's thrown at you. But none of that is really you. That's just like the residual shit that comes from like inhabiting this meat suit, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? That's just like, and so your consciousness is bombarded with that shit, just like it's bombarded with, you know, the temperature and the sound and the light, right? All your senses are constantly being bombarded with all kinds of shit. Your body is like taking in like all this shit all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that, the thoughts are just another instance of that. Okay. You know, like yeah. that's just, that's just a lot of bullshit. Okay. You know, you're the person who's, listen you're the person who's thinking about listening to those thoughts you know what i mean like you're the observer yeah you know yeah, it's true say that again you're the person you're the observer like you're not even you're not you're, those thoughts like you're not thinking those thoughts they're just coming from somewhere uh yeah yes. you know what i'm saying and you're just observing them as they come and then you have the decision you, you can want. make thoughts if you want to you can like consciously say okay i'm gonna think about you know going to school later or i'm gonna think about you know <laughs> i'm thinking right now about you know, the sign behind the mat at your own mat, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can do that, but then there's also shit that just pops in your head. Yeah, yeah, that's not, you. yeah it's like, where did that come from? You yeah. didn't create it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think that shit does follow you, you know, generationally. People build up, they call them uh, some scars, you know, like when you're a little kid, something happens to you, fucks you up, and now every time you're in anything close to that situation, you get all fucked up, you got, you know, your anxiety ridden, you gotta go home, you don't know what, the, you can't, you never know why, but you're all, you know, that's that's that shit coming back again. Yeah. You didn't deal with it. You didn't process it. You didn't work through it. It's blocking like the flow of energy, like very literally, and through your body, and it's it's fucking you all up. 
you know, and I feel like those, some scars and code like on your DNA, those fears, yeah. fears especially, man. Like I feel like anxiety is something that like, like, um, like runs, is prevalent in my family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, and you see behavior, you know, in like different generations of people in your family. And it's like, that's the same shit. And, yeah. it's, and part of it is that they saw it at family gatherings and in their house. And so they normalize it like the shit we were talking about before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But part of it's more than that, man. I think that if they grew up in different sides of the country, Maybe they'd still do those same things. Yeah, and they'd sure. still be neurotic in the same yeah. ways, right? Mm -hmm. So I, it has to be, it has to be. And I feel, excuse me. I feel like we dismiss all that. Like our, our society just dismisses I, oh, it all. 100%. I dismissed it all. I dismissed it all. I was like super atheist, bro. Like wow. I was raised Catholic and then I just was like, fuck this. And it just closed like my heart to it. I closed mm -hmm. my mind to it. And uh, yeah, man, I used to, <laughs> I was, I was gonna send this to my mom so she could listen to it. But man, we used to joke because my mom used to say, you know, when I have a problem, something I can't solve, something that's bothering me or I can't get past, I just give it to God, you know? Mm -hmm. And me and my brother and my sister used to fucking snicker and like laugh about it. And we thought it was so funny and so like, like, I don't even, and now I swear to fucking God, I, I give shit to God all the time. Me too. All the time, man. Mm -hmm. Hey man, I can't handle this. This is for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep my head down and keep going and we'll figure, you know, we'll figure it out. Like, I can't figure it out for myself. You I know? love that. I love okay. that. Like, it's just too big, you know? Yeah. And like, and I find myself doing that so more and more now, you know, life gets harder, you get older, your parents are getting older, you know, it's like, Shit is not gonna get easier, man. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get easier, you know? Yeah. You just get kinda hardened and get better at, at getting through it, you know? Yeah. And and I think part of that is figuring out that like, yeah, man, like this is not this material world is not all that it's at. Like you're you're weak and you're missing something, you're like if you're not embracing this missing realm, right? Because yeah. that's where it's at. This mm -hmm. is cool, mm -hmm. this is where we make things happen. You know, we're here to live this life and, and like do things in the physical world. But that's not like that's not it, man. No. <laughs> you know? Do, do oh, you no. think those thoughts that come out of nowhere, like you alluded to, you said that there's like past experiences, maybe from past lives. Do you think that's like past lives coming in saying like, hey, maybe you're you're starting to go down the same path as your life 500 years ago. Maybe we should take a direction, and that's why you start to like have a like a battle with yourself. I mean, maybe, but I, but like a lot more often than that, I think it's like a, irrational fears in mm -hmm. my case, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Um, being hesitant to like you know spend money because you're always you always think you're gonna be broke mm -hmm. right yeah well, that's because like everybody was broke like everybody was broke like everybody sure. was starving everybody yeah. no one had shit sure. right like if you go back one generation now you go back two uh, now you go back three everybody was starving we're yeah. going through wars we're going through famine we're going yeah. through you know the uh, the Spanish flu. We're going. You know, you name it, man. Yeah. Like you know, like older generations saw a lot of shit. You know, and right. I feel like uh, so like when when you're hesitant to do something or you're scared to do something, I feel like a lot of that is just like your ancestors, bro, who suffered, who were just like, no, I don't do that, man. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? <laughs> I can see that. I can you see know? that for sure. Yeah. And, right. and I think that's what it is, man. I think you get shell shocked. Like even in your even in life, you know, you can get shell like like um. I don't know, I always feel like what, like there was a generation, and maybe they've kind of passed, but like this, this generation that like lived in the depression, and we would always talk about them like, they never throw anything away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They never wanna throw shit away, because what if I need it one day and we don't have it? And like, I don't wanna to have to buy another one. And it's like this famine mentality, you yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, but it's a literal famine mentality because mm -hmm. they live through a famine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, dude. It's not irrational, man, you know? Yeah. And that's encoded on their kids and their kids were my mom, right? Uh -huh. And so like, and I came out of her body, like, you know? So yeah. Yeah. how is it not encoded somewhere Definitely. in there, dude? Definitely. You know? Dude, that's powerful. I, I never, cause I never thought about it that way. Yeah, I'll send you the video. I'll send okay. you the tent, you too. You love yeah. it. Yeah. Please yeah. do. I want to know. Yeah. That one kind of got me down this rabbit hole. Oh, fuck yeah. Please send it to me. There's a... Uh, <laughs> He said it again. <laughs> yeah, that's all I said. Man. I wasn't and, noticing it first, but now you uh, now, now it's it all. One time. of my favorite quotes on this whole topic is that, uh, what is it? Um, we're we're just spiritual beings having a human existence, mm -hmm. a human mm -hmm. experience, and I think that's so true. Like yeah. as you said, like yeah, we're creating we're in this realm. But there's so much more 
in that physical realm of what we see here. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we like just have forgotten, you know, um, I think we just have forgotten. I think that there, you know, like the, in, in Bhakti, there's, uh, there's like a whole chapter in the Bhagavatam about, um, you know, the process of being born and, you know, it, it's, uh, I don't know if you could say it's scientific, but the idea is that like, you know, birth is traumatic. And it's like when you're in the womb at first, you remember your past life, you remember everything. But then through like, you know, you're growing, you're, you're, you're confined, you, you know, and all of a sudden you're, boom, you know, there's pain, you're born, bam, light, like the senses are like totally overwhelmed with light and air and all, you know, you gotta learn how to breathe. And it's like scary as fuck, you know, you don't know who anybody is. And it's so disorientating that you're just like, like pulled back, you know what I mean? Yeah. Back to like this, like, uh, where you're like purely this like ego inhabiting a, a human body, you know, and you're completely dependent on your mother, mm. right? And like everything just starts from there. Yeah. Right? Fuck, yeah. And, like how yeah. are you fucked up when you're a kid and how are you, you know, or are you nurtured when you're a kid? And, like, and then like you're, you know, like, who knows what you're gonna be when you're six or seven. Yeah, damn. Yeah, I geek out about this topic. Oh, hell yeah, this is <laughs> so, fucking this awesome. This is so cool to learn about. Fuck, oh, dude, um, that thing you, when you said like you're memorizing or you're remembering your past life and then you come out in trauma, reminds me, I think I mentioned it on the episode last week or maybe I was talking to you about it, but my coworker, um, He's a great guy, forty-five year old, and he's uh he he's lo he would love to have this conversation right now. He would be going off. <laughs> and one of the things he he sort of has the same ideology, except he thinks that this is just all fucking like a plane, and um we have souls, but it's almost like a simulation. So basically, the human, the flesh experience, right? And then he goes, uh, his belief is when you die and you see the light, quote unquote, it's that's a trap to get you back here. So they get you to go to the light, and then right when you go to the light, you're born again. Or so I think I think that's what he was saying. Um, you know, if he was here right now, he could explain it. But bro, it's just fucking crazy. There's so <laughs> many things about it, man. Yeah. Like if you think about it, religion in itself too. Um, like because everyone's like, oh, well, religion's bullshit because every every fucking culture has their religion. Like, what if? Okay, what if everything did happen the way that it was written? Okay, and then there is a powerful being of god and another existence in another dimension but then each culture said okay well i'm gonna let's let's make it our way because you know mm -hmm. culture that's how cultures are right you right. know you're the italian like if you're italian you're spanish from spain you're fucking russian whatever you have your culture so then everyone's gonna assimilate and write shit to their culture doesn't mean that one is wrong or not just now people then have this little manipulation that they do i guess i don't know but yeah, cool. I see that. Yeah, I feel like all the hands that go into it, and it's like you know the go, uh, you know, like how much of Catholicism has been shaped by uh, you know political. Oh, fuck. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean by by the Emperor of Rome. Like how much of what's in the modern Bible was literally dictated, like the contents of it, what was in and what was out, right? Were dictated by a Roman emperor at some point, and then yeah. it's just been like completely diluted over time. And the mystical side of these great religions is just completely hidden. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to go looking. Yeah. for it and it's like shit man why why isn't that part I, of the I ask myself yo. that all the time uh, yo yo and i think I, I think you know it's it's control yeah um, you know if, if everybody had the, you know these uh things that we're talking about right now and we obviously don't know much in the grand scheme of things of what it could be or what we don't know we don't know but i think uh, i think there's definitely an aspect there i think there's so much that we don't know as humans of what we're capable of yeah. in a spiritual way and yeah. i think they keep it suppressed for sure that's exactly what i was actually just about to get into you guys read my mind <laughs> i was literally gonna say like think about it the highest people who control the world right by highest i just mean they're just up here right my opinion of scumbags but whatever <laughs> they're they they have all the secrets right they have right. all the secrets yeah. and then you said it and you said it suppression and control yeah. Oh, yeah. they literally were like oh fuck this is it's what amazing, life yeah. is oh, and yeah. this is what you can do but i'm a piece of shit so i don't let's pretend that it's all bullshit oh that's bullshit that's nonsense but they know it and they're keeping it for themselves oh, it's like the mysteries of a uh, is it a lucis or i can't remember, but it's um there was like a a place in i wish i knew the name of the of the place but there was a place in it's from a baghdad iraq no in ancient greece where um everyone like all the big players from back in the day would make this trek to go to this spot in Greece. And like, I guess what they, what they think is that they were doing like a mushroom ceremony. Okay. Hmm. You know, and they were, and, and 
to the mysteries of Eleusis. I think that's what it's called, the mysteries of Eleusis. And so they would go there and they would be initiated. And everyone would just be really hush hush about it. Like, you weren't supposed to talk about it, you weren't supposed to write about it. You went there, you had this experience, but like Marcus Aurelius, like other, yeah. you know, other great, uh, you know, uh, Greek philosophers from, you know, ages before that even made reference to it being like life changing. Wow. You know, these, the, the uh, ceremonies they did there and stuff like that, what they learned when they were there. Yeah. And then, but, but the later Roman emperors completely destroyed it. Mm. Oh. And the, and because it was something that was underground that you would you know if you were initiated if you went there and you did the ceremony then you understand you know what I mean but you're not supposed to like go and try and tell everybody about it because yeah. I mean I don't know if you guys have eaten mushrooms but there's no way to explain eating mushrooms to you guys. No, you I, I've mushrooms. never. I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eat some mushrooms, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I highly recommend it. But uh, <laughs> you know what I want to do though, because you were this is a ceremony that so. No, I've never eaten mushrooms. Me, the, the biggest vice that I remember, not like that's that's a bad word for it. Um, because I'm putting a negative connotation to that. Um, but like alcohol, that's the drug I've done, right? Mm -hmm. But you want to know what I want to fucking do? <laughs> I want to do in a, in a nice, legitimate, controlled setting. I want to do ayahuasca. Uh -huh. I've heard stories of people like the enlightenment that you get from doing ayahuasca because you really start to like that questions. Maybe not they don't get answered to you, but you find the answer through the freaking trip that you go through. Yeah, yeah. And I know people are probably listening right now, like, oh, what the fuck Joe's talking about? I watched the people steal your shit. Yeah, they're scumbags. But if you do it legitimately, <laughs> like, I've heard of, like, experiences where people go in and, and like, from different podcasts, yeah. people who are, like, off, oh, like, you know, the mentality they went is, oh, fuck everyone, with the exception of these core people in, in my group, fuck everyone else. <laughs> and they go out of the ayahuasca experience, they're like, oh, no, I'm supposed to be the rock. Oh, dude. So my buddy Dave, who I did those podcasts with, yeah, yeah, yeah. he takes PM, I swear to God. Like, you know, he and his uh, fiance, mm -hmm. they take people into the jungle and they do ayahuasca ceremonies. They have their <laughs> like training with Shipibo. Uh, God, man, I, I, I don't want to like say the wrong thing and, and be like terribly offensive or anything like that, but they're basically training with these <clears throat> uh, shaman. Yeah, the shaman. Yeah. The Shipibo shaman and learning how to do the ceremonies, run the ceremonies, guide people and stuff. They've done a bunch of them themselves. Yeah. It's all about it, dude. Yeah. You yeah. got a connection, right? Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. For real. For, I mean, yeah, totally legit. And he does jujitsu. Yeah. And he's a great dude. I love, cool. I love that guy. He's like my brother. Um, But he, uh, yeah, that's like his calling. That's what he does. And he does, he'll do mushroom ceremonies for people who have, who are having like serious, like psychological issues and help them work through some of that stuff, you know? So there's a very serious um, work yeah. that happens. You know, with these with, with these medicines, you know, um, they're yeah, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're great. I mean, you know, you can take them and uh, you know, if you take them the right way and you are open to what you're going to be shown, like it's uh, life changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the thing about the shaman, um, the this person that I was listening to saying their their experience, it, they felt like there's the shaman and there's three ladies, at least in this one. And he said that the ladies, because we were talking about out of realm or not human, even though they were human, they had such a nice benevolent aura about mm -hmm. them, they didn't feel human. He thought that they might have been like good spirits, yeah. but even though they were human, like, I don't know, it's crazy. Yeah, they knew all about that. But you can get uh, a serious, you can have a very serious experience without going to the jungle and, and drinking ayahuasca. Like, that's like a multi-day experience usually yeah. mm -hmm. you know and definitely like several hours like eight hour plus yeah. you know and you can be you can become sick there's a lot of there's, you know it's not uh it's not an easy path no but anybody can get their hands on mushrooms man yeah and, like you can have an amazing you can you can go like I've been everywhere. I've been to the other side of the universe, right? Like, I'm just saying. You know, and I'm, I mean, you know, and you'll be shown things that you maybe that you knew were true, but like you couldn't put into words, or that you just needed someone to be like, "Yeah, man, that's that's real." You know, that's why I think I want to. I want to like. I want questions answered, right? Like yeah. that, that's what I want for me. And I, and even though I may have the question, the answer to the question, I want it like spiritually. And so I don't want like, cause I know, like you said, like it, people can get sick and yes, like there are people who throw up and shit and I wouldn't be doing it to be like getting the high or anything. Um, yeah, it's not like that. Yeah, I don't think no, with no, ayahuasca. It's yeah, not no. a party. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> awesome. Dude, that was the best, best, uh, I don't know if that's tangent or just 
off of the conversation yeah, from yeah, a question. Sure. What was that question? Where the question, well, um, it, was, it was where would you live if you said hey, yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's I remember, hilarious. I remember that question. Yeah. Yeah. First, I've talked about my, how scared I am of foreign language people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hold on a second. It's a full fucking circle. You went from, dude, I'd be so scared I'm a target to, I've been to the other side of the universe. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but I was not a target. Don't be loved. Yeah, yeah. Don't be loved. Don't be loved. Don't be loved. Bad shit. All right, so we still got more questions. Don't worry, folks. You are going to get all the fucking Oh, we got Joe Farina. Oh. That's gonna bring you back. <laughs> oh, no. Will you consider legally changing your name to Judo? <laughs> you gotta tell us about this. Yeah. So yeah, this is great, man. Um, so when I first started teaching the kids class, Craig was the head coach, and he had this uh, from Toro, right? From Toro, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, he's Craig from Pure. He just is at Toro right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it, but, no. He's a, and he's an OG, man. He. He was like one of the builders. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was around way back in the day. And there's a bunch of guys like that, but he's definitely one of them. Man. Um, I love that guy. He's a, he's a good buddy of mine. We still keep in touch, talk all the time. But like, um, he used to do this thing where if it was your birthday, you get the coaches would toss you on the crash pad, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm such a spaz, man, you know? <laughs> Just like, you know. And as much of a spaz as I am today, this is like, you know, early blue belt though like so even more so like even you know and so i'm just like i'm i was always like damn you know i'm gonna like pick up somebody's kid and i'm gonna like break their fucking leg or something or i'm gonna fall like trying to do some crazy throw because craig would like lift him over his head and like spin him around and, like toss him and like yeah, sure. and quinn would come over and grab him and like spin him around by the gi and toss him and i'd come over and be like eh. and just like you know yeah <laughs> like a little trip yeah. throw him down and so Craig was just started calling me Judo Phil, you know, because yeah. I was obviously like so <laughs> hesitant to do any stand up on these little kids, you know. And then he'd be like, all right, come on, Judo Phil, come on, Judo Phil. And then like eventually, like the kids just started calling me Judo Phil. Oh, and then, like, so, like, so, like, it would be like, you know, the cl kids' class ends at 6 30 and the adult class is, is starting. So it would be like, you know, 6 28. All the adults are sitting on the top side of the mat. And Craig is like, you know, come on, Judo Phil, it's your turn. And the kids are like, Judo Phil, Judo Phil, Judo Phil. And it's like, oh my God, these fucking kids are calling me Judo Phil. Why are they calling me Judo Phil? Like, this is going to get me killed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, somebody's going to be like, oh, Judo yeah, Phil. Well, you know, oh, judo. you know, and they're going to, like, and I, you know, like, I don't know zero judo, but I don't know judo. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, no way, dude. And, uh, and then when Kevin Costello came and started teaching judo, he heard it. And he was like, he was like, oh, Judo Phil. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I guess, okay, Judo Phil. And he started calling me Judo Phil. <laughs> like, he he like, took offense to it, but he also thought it was hilarious. That's like, funny. as soon as he knew it was bullshit, yeah, yeah, he yeah. thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and then, uh, and then um, somebody called me Judo Phil at Colton Brown's. Oh, Colton Brown came oh. to Pure. Colton Brown was at Pure, and somebody called me Judo Phil. And now Colton Brown calls me Judo Phil. No, that's, that's fucking hilarious. You gotta get a tattoo of this great, or something, man. I mean, honestly, these guys, he's such a killer. And Ke Kevin, too, you know? Yeah, these yeah, guys yeah. call me Judo Phil. That's, that's hilarious, that's you know? That's fucking It's hilarious. the most, like, that's you know, like sarcastic game yeah, of all yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. That's great. But it really is gonna get my ass kicked one day. Oh, my. No, no, dude. But you'll, you'll, you'll be pulling, uh... Fucking Judo Phil's pulling guard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a fake. He's a fraud. He's a fraud. <laughs> Outside Ashigarabi. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Scott, what are the most important lessons you'll pass on to your kids, Scott Cooper? <sighs> Cooper. That was a tense question, Coop. I love it. Mm. Yeah, what I'm trying to pass on to my kids is... Um, has a few like a few like ultra overarching themes i guess right like um whatever you know you, like anything <clears throat> anything worth having is worth working hard for and you're gonna have to work hard for it okay you know love that is a big one right like um no one's gonna give you anything but you can get whatever you want you know what I mean? Like, so you just have to work hard for it, man. Like, no one's gonna, no one's gonna tell you you gotta get out of bed and do this. No one's gonna tell you you gotta, you gotta go on this interview. You gotta make your resume look better. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. I did all that bullshit, and some of it's corporate bullshit. And hopefully, they'll be able to avoid it. But like, uh, no one's gonna pull you around, man. You know, you can really do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, I'm trying to make sure they know you can do whatever you want. Like my, you know, like my daughter is is. Uh, is excellent at school. My son struggles somewhat, but it's like, man, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't want to go to college, don't go to college, man. Like, what do you want to do? 
What kind of business do you want to open up? I'm your partner. Let's go do it. Nice. Yeah, like, what do you want to do, love man? That. Let's go do it. Like, and and uh, you know, so but we're gonna work. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it for you, bro. We're yeah. gonna work, right? So you know that that's one thing. You know, um, I just have this rule. I have this thing in my head where it's like, when I die, when I, I the and you can ask anyone in my life, anyone who's close to me, what's the last thing Phil said to you? And they will all say, he said, I love you. You know what I'm saying? Nice. And like I try to make that like a hunt, I try to make that as true as possible. You know what I mean? So I tell my my wife and my kids are so sick of hearing I love you. You know, like uh, I don't know. <laughs> they say it all the time. You know what I mean? But even people yeah, in the boring. gym, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, I try to. You know, my brother Sean is this this guy who like everything he does is just out of love. He literally walk. He'll walk around. He works in uh, my father's uh, trucking business in South Kearney, you know what I mean? And, and you know how it is in a place like that. Like, everyone's walking around with a scowl on their face. Yeah, it's not yeah, a friendly place. Yeah. It's a warehouse. And he's walking around with a fucking bag of fruit everywhere he goes. He's like, hey, man, want something some different? Want some of this? Want some of that? Just like... Nice. You know, he's like... he Everywhere he goes, like, people are happy that they ran into him. Yeah. You know? And it's like, I just want to be like that. And I want my kids to want to be like that. I want them to just, like, make their life full of love. Love you know life. what I mean? Like, be like you say, be a lighthouse, bro. Yeah. I yeah. sent that shit to my brother, oh, and I, I said, "You oh, are a cool. fucking lighthouse." That's what exactly what I said to him. Right he was right like, right "Nah, on. you are," and, and he's right. I am, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But no, I mean, I, when I saw that, I sent that right to him because we talk about that shit oh, all cool. the time, man. So yeah, like I, that's how I want my kids to be, and like you know, like I, I kind of alluded to me and my son struggles a little bit at school, but we had a meeting at his school recently, where they are. Uh, you know, he gets extra help in classes and he's in some classes that are a little smaller. So we go over like what the goals are and like what, you know, how he's doing this year as his first year in high school. But you know, the, to hear a teacher say like, yeah, you know, um, he's really nice to everybody, you know? Yeah. Like he does, he, he's never a problem, you know? He's, he's, you know, and look, my son can be <laughs> such a prick, you know what I mean? He's 14, you know? I mean, you imagine, I'm, I'm, he's, he has all, all the same, you know, in him that I had and I was a prick when I was his age, you know? But he's nice to, like everybody, all yeah. his classmates. So, yeah, he's a good kid. You know, so he's not, you know, it's hard to get out of bed in the morning. This is, you know, that, but, you know, I want him to be a good kid. I want him to be, you know, confident enough of himself that he could just help someone he loves him. Yeah. And, and like, just, just wear that, you know what I mean? Love wear that you. every day, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Love is the answer. Love that response. That's beautiful. Yeah, your kids are going to fucking grow up being great, great human beings, man. I hope so, man. Hell yeah. Um, so that absolute beautiful description yeah, then gets followed up by Justin Mezzacapo, who literally <laughs> is not a question, just goes, fuck you, <laughs> F-A-Q, you, fuck you. <laughs> Where did who go? <laughs> um, Inside the Capo joke. Love it. <laughs> so then my next, the next question is for my boy, uh, Corey. Oh, this is an interesting one. I haven't followed the NFL too much, but who we got in the Super Bowl? So uh, Eagles. 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 I just found out who's in the Super Bowl. Well, you guys. Those are two potential of the four. Oh, uh, it's Chiefs. Oh, so you um, don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know shit either, man. I watch a game, couple of games a year. I uh, love it. Not a great, great. Yeah. So yeah, Chiefs, Niners, uh, Bengals, and Eagles. I I'm going to just go. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to destroy the table. I'm just going to go about Bengals. Fuck it. I'm uh, going with Eagles. I, I don't know. Have you seen all the uh, Dallas Cowboys uh, memes going around? No. Oh, they're hilarious. Are they <laughs> I, that they never done ever fucking win a goddamn thing. Yeah, it was like. Uh, uh, I, I forget them, but they're they're funny. Love Just it. different, making fun of the Cowboys. So it's what <laughs> Niners and Eagles from the NFC? Uh, in the NFC, and then uh, Bengals, Chiefs. All right, so I'm gonna go for Chiefs because I used to be a Giants fan, so I don't want to root for anybody in, in the in the, the yeah fuck yeah fuck, fuck them. especially the especially the Eagles. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Eagles. Um, and then Scott then had another question again. This is the second to last question. If you could be reborn in any time period, past or future. When would you want to live? I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd want to live in a different time. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, Hard. there's a lot of shit about our current time that's fucked up, right? Yeah. There's a lot of shit that's fucked up. But when you go back in any significant amount of time, like it just gets really bad, man. Yeah. Like, like if you could tell me that Atlantis was real. And you would go right, and there were and there were ancient civilizations that were more advanced than us, and that's where I want to go. Yeah, that'd be dope. Right? I think right? I agree with you, man, for sure. But if but if but if you're telling me I got to go back to like 
my wife having a baby like on an open plane on my way across you know the country in a stagecoach then uh, i don't want to do that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm cool like that's it would be a cool adventure but i don't know man like i don't know i'm too much of a pussy for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well no it's it's true because i was thinking about that i think about this often actually about how um really the houses we live in are palaces in comparison to most of human history yeah. that we know of yeah you know so it's like you know yeah there's shit going on in the world but yeah. you're living in the best possible time if you romanticize the past right it'd be like oh you know i want to live like uh dances with wolves and uh, live in the you know the teepee on the plains and hunt buffalo but it's like yeah but those guys were like uh they were like raiders they yeah. would, like go into other's camps and steal each other's wives and yeah. children yeah, yeah. and make them slaves and kill all the men yeah. like looks hey, good man. on the movies and tv you know? shows bro yeah, that's yeah, about yeah. it less dance of the wolves more apocalypto you gotta yeah. watch it right yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, like apocalypto or how about fucking the vikings dude right. they just go yeah, and right. fucking pillage you what the fuck yeah. like yeah. one day you're just fucking eating dinner the next day your fucking house is getting raided. like what the fuck it just looked really painful like yeah. yeah you get your eye gouged out or your hand cut off because you stole or all this stuff dude but they've 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 literally come a long way they've gone from pillaging and raping to now being a credit card company so <laughs> yeah right exactly all right great question um i guess yeah fuck it why not i, I like that answer like an angel civilization for sure i would want to go back to whoever built the pyramids and yeah. figure out how the hell they did that probably right because there was something going on there <laughs> no aliens they'll probably come down and tell yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll definitely aliens. Like, no i don't know we don't i don't know man yeah, but I agree with you. All the ancient architecture and stuff, I want to know. I want to know how they did that. Yeah, I'd Absolutely. love to go go Maybe see like the time. samurai, but like I would get my head chopped off. Man. Yeah, like, it wouldn't it wouldn't work out. Yeah, you know? like, oh, this is a fucking cool sword. Like, I wouldn't be the samurai. Yeah. I'd be like the guy on the side of the road, like gets down and bows when the samurai <laughs> comes by. You know, hammer I mean? like, nail. <laughs> it's like fucking love it. Oh man! All right, last question, DC. That's the one. Is because his first of all, his first thing that he puts. This is Anthony. Mm -hmm. Professor Batman was good. Um, here's a mind blown moment. When you say the words forward or back, your lips move in that direction. Motherfucker, now I'm not going to be able to say anything now without thinking about forward. it. Forward. Back. <laughs> shit. No shit. Right? Yeah. Thank you for that. Now I'm just going to be thinking about that. Fun fact. Fun yeah. fact. Forward. Awesome. Here's the question. Forward. We all just sat here and said it. <laughs> yeah, right. We all sat here and said it a few times. Uh, here's the question. What's something that makes you so aggravated and confrontational? Could be anything. But when you look back at the moment, you go, I got mad over that. Oh, 100% political stuff. Yeah, political stuff. Dude, I got so angry and so emotionally heated over the past few years. <laughs> past, not Well, not really the past year, but the first like two years of the whole COVID thing. Uh -huh. Oh my God, there's so many times that I just, my blood would boil over things. And looking back, I'm like, why did you even get angry over that? I'm mm -hmm. stupid. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think like when you get, like, uh, that's just frustration, right? Yeah. Like, the, like when the COVID thing happened, it was like, fuck, man. Like, like, every, like everybody, everybody had their own, like, take on it, but everyone was frustrated that yeah. it wasn't going, like, any, good at all. And, like, things were, everyone knew shit was, like, fucked up, but no one, there was nothing, absolutely nothing you could do about it. Like, it was just, frustration so like there's rage you know what i mean yeah. that comes out of that you know yeah um man i don't know like um i i i, I think everyone does but i have a hard time with anger man I, like anger is like the number one um the hardest thing it comes out of nowhere right like it just sneaks up on you when you're in your weakest moments right when yeah you're, when you're tired you know right? that, that's when, when the anger happy. comes right yeah. and like uh i don't know man um what I've started to kind of understand about anger is like it's always about something else you know it's always like that you're hurt or that you don't want to be hurt or that you know what I mean and, and it's like so um I've been trying to like understand that mm -hmm. more yeah you know but I've been angry over some of the stupidest shit like for no good reason um damn I'm trying to think like what would have been I get so angry about my son's like, grades or just about his, his demeanor and what a wise ass he could be, you know what I mean? He said, and it's all it's all my ego, you know what I mean? It's all like, uh, you, he should treat me with more respect. Yeah. Why doesn't, I, I work so hard for him. Mm -hmm. Doesn't he see how hard I work for him? Like, the, he's killing me. 
when he looks at me and he's like, fuck you, you know what I mean? With his eyes or whatever, you know, he's sometimes literally he'll say fuck you but or whatever, whatever he's doing. He'll, and it's like, bro, really? Like, how do you, I would never talk that to my father. Like all these things, right? Like, who the hell do you think you are? Don't you know who I am, right? Like all yeah. these fucked up things like flash through your head. And uh, it's all, I think the family stuff is is the stuff that really uh, gets me going. If I had to pick like one thing, because that's really where all, all your emotions are. Like you're vulnerable, man. Yeah. You're so vulnerable. They know, my kids know what aggravates me. My son knows, man. If he wants to piss me off, he'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to Jiu Jitsu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I used to get furious, you know? Uh, but it was always like, I'm a fucking jujitsu coach. How could my kids not go to jujitsu? It was never like it was always something about me. Something that yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, that that I'm actually reading a book right now called The Power of Thinking Big by Dr. J, uh, David Schwartz, and it's the magic of thinking big, right? Is it? Is it the magic of thinking big? Yeah, no, I think you're right. No, I think you're right. Um, what's it called? Uh, he says there's a, a anecdote he gives where someone was talking to him about how, or no, he was in a hotel lobby, right, and um. The, the clerk's getting fucking reamed out by some potential customer. And then the customer goes, you're a piece of shit, asshole, and leaves. And then when he goes up, he says the clerk was so nice with him. And he goes, I admire the way that you were able to take that. And he goes, well, most people are good people. Like, he's like, he's like he, that guy's probably a good person most people are. Mm -hmm. And that goes to your thing about, like, there's always something else. For you, it was me, right? When, when oh, everybody's getting angry. No, you're just, it's something with you. Mm -hmm. Maybe that person just got... I don't know, divorce, maybe right. fucking someone just died. Maybe your mom's sick. Right? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. I think about that all the time, man. Like, you know, my mom's doing good now, but over the past two years, she's had some health shit going on. And it's like, that's all consuming, man. Yeah. If your mom's sick, if your kid's sick, if your wife's sick, come on, man. You know, like, cut people a break sometimes. It's, it's so easy to get angry, you know? And uh, I've really been trying to work on it, man. I'm not, I'm still not great at it, but like, uh, when I'm in the car, is like, that's the best time to work on it, man. Dude, for sure. You know? For sure. You know, and it's so hey, hard. Somebody, it's so hard to be like, you know what, man? Oh. You got you obviously have to get somewhere quicker than me, man. Good luck. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, yeah. like go ahead. Or, go or ahead. not as quick. Right. 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 So yeah. it's like but it's something it's like all the time you gotta work on that shit. Man. Oh, all the time. All the time. I, all the time I tell myself, yeah, I'm not gonna get mad five seconds later. <laughs> 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 yeah. There was <laughs> you wanna tell a story or me? <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> I, we were in our. We went to Texas a few weeks ago for like a uh, networking event and stuff. And uh, I think Joe was getting. Were you we getting angry? I was. Get, I was getting angry because the fucking. Um, it wasn't. I don't know. We we couldn't get the the, the phone to hook up to the car so we can get because we 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 did a rent a car mm. and I don't know where the fuck I'm going in Texas. <laughs> it's huge. So I'm putting it in and then Don's like, all right, well we'll just we got up the directions here. Maybe it'll go on here. And I'm like. Dude's like, what the fuck? And Don's like, bro. He's like, Joe, you don't need to get mad. Like, it's all good. Like, really, relax. I go, yeah, you're right. Not two seconds later, he goes, is this fucking thing going to work? <laughs> like, I could It wasn't sticking up with my phone. I had just told him to, to calm down. Like, don't get angry, man. Like, see, you're getting emotional. Yeah, not even 30 seconds later. I'm like, you fucking kidding me? Dude. Like, punching the thing. Bro, but it was like. Fun. Dude, I'm this way with yeah. fucking soccer. <laughs> Bro, I'm not even playing the sport. I'm watching my favorite team. And I'm all for being competitive because I'm a competitive guy, right? But fuck my life, dude. I will go up in a Champions League. Champions League is when the, the your team from one uh, league in a country faces another country, right? right. So then you get the bragging rights. Right? So right, country's right. locker is the best. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> but I'll always go into a game and I'll be like, hey, you know what? I'm just hoping for a nice game. I'm going to watch the game. Yeah, you know what? If happens. we win, we win. If we lose, hey, man, got to love my team. Who do you support? AC Milan. Okay. Yep. AC Milan gets scored in the first fucking minute. I'll be like, this is the biggest bullshit. <laughs> this is fucking bullshit. And I'm just like, what am I getting mad at, dude? Yeah. <laughs> it's a game. <laughs> it's a game, bro. Yeah. Like, do you watch soccer? Uh, not not enough. Not, not like that. I, I like soccer. I've always liked soccer. I really liked it when I was like, I don't know. In my 20s, I really liked it, but yeah. it was so hard to watch it. Like, there was nothing on. I, when I was in college, when I was at NJIT, I used to get out of a class just early enough that if I got home right away, I could watch. Um, every week, they played the game from uh, 
Barcelona. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. At like two o'clock in the afternoon on, on ESPN, like yeah. on a Thursday or some shit. I forget what it was. It was yeah. Something like that, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And like that was the only soccer that was on TV. Yeah, you can yeah, go yeah. see the Metro Stars, you know what I mean? Yeah, the giant stadium. Yeah, and yeah, like 10,000 yeah. people and an 80,000 people person. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I was like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah. You know, it was kind of <laughs> shitty, man. It really wasn't yeah. good. And like now it's, uh, it's everywhere, but I just fell out of it. I don't, I mean, I watch the only sport. I, I watch outside of like uh, Jiu Jitsu and MMA is uh, F1. I got into F1 oh, recently. Oh, recently. Recently. That's recently. Sick, dude. Yeah, and it's like, uh, I don't know. Who's I, your I, car? I, do, you, do you have a car or know. do you have a driver? No, you don't have enough. I don't. Gear. I'm like too new to the game. I don't have like anyone I root for. I like, yeah. there's some drivers I like, and, but I don't, you know. Hamilton's still the best, right? Him and, uh, and uh, what's the other guy we start with the the Belgian? Because Hamilton from England is like the best. The Mercedes and then the. Um, Who's, what's the, the other guy from Mercedes? Yeah, is it? Is it? Well, like, Bo, Botas was from Mercedes, but he's not with them anymore. No, right now. Isn't they it? Have like, Ver, oh. Ver, Ver, Ver something, right? No, Ver, Verstappen drives Verstappen. for Red Bull. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Verstappen. And he's like, yeah, he's he is he won the last two years. Okay. But before him, Hamilton won for like eight years. Eight years, yeah. yeah. And then, so much of it is the team and the car and sure. engineering. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's really cool, man. I got into it, literally got into it because of that Formula One drive to survive. Like the first year that came out, I watched it and I was just like, I'm gonna check out a race, man, because you know, there's no way it's as good as they make it out to be. Like, you know, like, like, like when I remember when Floyd Mayweather, when John, when Arturo Gotti yeah. was gonna fight Floyd Mayweather, they had to be convinced that it would be close. Yeah. And that fight was ridiculous, dude. Oh. He just got lit up. And I was like, I'm never gonna believe the hype again. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. That was a long time ago. But like, since then, I'm like, I'm not believing the hype. So I seriously thought, like, I'm gonna turn this race on. I'm gonna watch 10 minutes of it. It's gonna be like every other, like, NASCAR thing I've ever seen. Yep. I'm just gonna be like, fuck you. Yeah, and I watched the whole race, and I watched every race of that year, and I really? haven't missed a race yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to get into it. I'm looking yeah. for something to watch. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, it's exciting. Man. F1 is fucking sick because NASCAR, like, and I was a NASCAR fan when I was a kid, but literally, like Jeff Dunham, the the comedian with the puppets, mm -hmm. they did a skit on it. It's like you're making a left turn. Right. It's like yeah, they're just living making a left turn. F1, dude, you're those oh, tracks yeah. are crazy. They That's over. real. They're crazy. all over. A lot of vertical, yeah. and, like all that, all over the place, man. Is the F1, turns are crazy. Uh, like Le Mans mm -mm. and all that, or that's something else. I don't know. I don't know any other racing than F1, and I barely know that. I've watched it for four years. I don't know anything about cars. Uh, like I'm like a yeah. total novice, and like I, yeah, I, I got into it because I was like, these guys are like, they're like fighter pilots. Like this must yeah. what it be like with yeah. the personality of like a World War Two ace. Like would have been like these because oh, yeah. they're the same age. Yeah, they're twenty. They're nineteen. Right. Like, yep. and you're in a physical specimen. You can lose. I think um, with all the stuff, like the amount of first of all, your body goes through wear and tear. If you want to know how much your body goes through wear and tear, go to Jersey City, 40 mile per hour go-karts. Have a nice fucking race. Yeah. And then afterward, lift up your shirt and look at your back and see the welts you're putting on yourself. Now do that at 200 miles per hour yeah, for two wow. hours. <laughs> they lose 11 pounds. Really? You have to, you have to be in tip-top shape. Uh, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. racers, yeah. Uh, the, so like you, I'm not like, an expert in this, but the difference with Le Mans is, is it's a different type of style race. F1, think, for you Americans, think Indianapolis, Indy car racing. That's what the car sort of looks, looks like. like. Yeah. But that wing on the front, yeah. wing on the back, and like real skinny in the middle. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then, but now, now put Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren, um, like, but Porsche, I, no, Porsche, no, Porsche, Porsche is coming house. into it. Porsche, Porsche is coming yeah, into it. Yeah, they're gonna be a new team uh, yeah. in like a couple of years. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of Ferrari, Ferrari, uh, Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull. Uh, there's a whole bunch of teams, man. Yeah. Like ten, ten different teams. Yep. Um, after that, they're like rec less recognizable names unless you're really into it. You know? Yep, exactly. And Le Mans is literally now take those cars, take a Ferrari, right. take a Porsche, take a Lamborghini, soup it up, and you're racing now. Uh, like that, like regular yeah, cars it's like regular cars, but like not really. Like if right. you see them, they're putting their right. fucking supercharged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, I don't know how I got into it. how. I, well, I know how I got into it. That's how I got into it. But uh, yeah, I was very surprised that I was into it. I, it still doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because, <laughs> and I used to be into like uh, hockey, football, basketball, like you know, baseball, and I was like diehard for my teams. And when I got into jujitsu, I was just like, man. I didn't even play any of these sports, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, and uh, I was like, I, I don't know. And it was, it is like this culture of, uh, and nothing wrong with having a beer, you know? But this culture of drinking and, and obnoxiousness. Yeah. And, and like, I don't know, I don't want to say toxic, <laughs> right? Cause like, you know what I mean? But like, it, the, it the is, behavior is that is, way, man. It, is, it, it is. is that way, you know? And the few times where I was like, I would go to a big football game and my family and my kids were around, I didn't act in a way that I was, I was feeling proud about the yeah. next day, you know? Yeah. 
So it's like, you know, the less of that I had in my life, the better. And then like a couple years later, it was just gone. Yeah. And I was just like, oh fuck, I don't know who anybody on the Giants is anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. Now I really know zero. I don't like, I don't like Eli that. retired and I don't know anybody. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm gone, <laughs> you know? Like, and so it's really strange, man. Yeah. Um, because I was really into it. My father and my brothers are like diehard Notre Dame fans. And like, I don't know. I only know if they win or lost because I need to know like what kind of mood my dad's gonna be in if I got a call. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. And, and that's it. And it used to be like it was all consuming, yeah. like for the whole fall. Like it was just crazy, you know. We go out there all the time. It was nuts, man. I've been there three times. Yeah, damn. Yeah, no, I, I like that toxic. I, it is. It is. I mean, like, dude, I'm a fan, so and I'll go to the games. It's not that everyone's toxic goes to the game, but you think about it, you go to a football game. There's a fight. Yeah, you go to soccer a fight. in Europe, dude. Forget it. You yeah. get you get caught in the wrong section of the crowd. You're not even figuratively dead. You're dead. Like they'll dude, kill you. Dude, when have you gone to a football yeah. game and not seen someone stumble over themselves? Oh, dude. Like, oh, yeah. You're right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Good point. You know? Good point. And you can bring your kids there and stuff. It's like I don't know, man. Yeah. And then and then it's just like I don't know. It's just a, I don't I don't miss it. No, it's really not. You know what I mean? I think Joe, if me and you ever go over, you know, go to a soccer game out you know in another country or something i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to research and study the game of soccer just so Dude, I, I have like some sort of defense yeah you know <laughs> when the guy said you know name a player or something <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, like, oh let me uh, pull out my notepad Bro, so in new york because <laughs> they're so serious about it. oh dude in my in new york it burned down he reopened but it was my favorite restaurant because the food was just great but it was owned by two dudes straight off the book in Italy. And one of nice. them is a lazio fan lazio has a Oh, a lot of history of fans <laughs> being like fascist and like like serious about just I don't know if he's a fascist, but he's part of the fucking firm they call it, which is their gang. So I don't believe it at that. But dude, it was the Lazio club, so you would go for a game and and dude, literally while people are fucking eating dinner and lunch, the game is on. And he doesn't, and he's he's the owner, so right, he, right. he treats his customers right. But he didn't give a fuck. Like, if someone doesn't like the game there, don't eat there. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, on Sunday. Then it was the derby. Rome, AS, AS Roma versus Lazio. Those two hate each other. Right. Like, worse than fucking... You think the worst football rivalry here, Giants-Eagles? Right. Pales in comparison to the, this football soccer rival. So we go. I tried making a reservation because I want to watch it there. He goes, bro. He goes, impossible. He, he hangs up the phone. I'm hearing yelling in the background. He's like, <laughs> impossible. <laughs> uh, venite domani, which means come tomorrow. And he hangs up the phone. So I'm like, and, he, and my friends are like, dude, what did Giovanni say? I said, well, he hung up on me. So <laughs> I'm like, fucking. I was like, dude, I want to watch this fucking game in the Lazio club. I'm not a Lazio fan, but fuck it. We're yeah. in New York. We walk there, right? And I look at him, and Giovanni's like, all right, he said, you guys can stay, because he knew us, he said, you guys can stay, but you can't be at the bar that's reserved for the Lazio, just stand back there, and you know, if you want a beer, and I was like, yeah, sure, watching the game. Dude, Lazio was winning, thank God. One of these kids from like Turkey, okay, <laughs> he just started talking about a player from Roma, that's all, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, so-and-so's doing really, really well, like, you know, he's actually a good player. And the, one of the Lazio people turns around and he goes, if I'm a Roma fan, I go, nah, bro, nah, he's, he's, he's not even Italian, don't worry. <laughs> and I was like, I turned him on, I was like, bro, shut, shut the fuck up. up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, shut oh, up. Man. Um, but yeah, man, fuck. That's awesome. I used to like, uh, I, I used to like, be real into like street punk and oi and stuff like that from like England, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything around here, you know, like I was, uh, I was into that when I was younger, like punk, there was a cool punk rock scene, yeah. like where I grew up. And uh, so I used to really like to get the old shit from like the 80s and, and you know 70s yeah. in England and they had a huge like skinhead culture and football hooligan culture mm -hmm. and like you read up on that shit and those stories are fucking crazy yeah they're, they're nuts, just lunatics they're just such organized violence Yo, yeah, it's it's organized right? violence it's, it's so crazy, crazy. Beat the shit out of you yeah man. what the fuck out of control when they're looking for it yeah man they're looking for it like it's really bad when like innocent bystanders get caught up in it but like so many of the stories are just like Two roving gangs of people just looking for it. Oh yeah, so for ridiculous, sure. you know, yeah. so crazy. It's fucking crazy, <laughs> right, man? Human beings, oh, crazy. <laughs> but man, we are at fucking dude, two hours. Yeah, it feels like yeah, it feels a good time, dude. Phil, thanks right. for coming on, man. Oh, yeah, man. It was a lot of fun. Definitely went, went really quick. But yeah, you're welcome back anytime. Oh, absolutely. Well, leave leave us like what's like some parting <laughs> parting <laughs> part, some parting wisdom. <laughs> parting wisdom. Come on. Oh man, I don't have anything to say. This was fun though, man. Awesome. It was uh, it was really cool. Awesome, really cool. I appreciate you guys having me on. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. It's our pleasure, dude. We loved it. Um, and I definitely want to talk to you more about fucking all the the meditation and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, I can dude, go on anytime. seven hours. On yeah, anytime, man. Same.
Fuck yeah. Uh, hell yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's the show. You just met Phil McEntee, episode 55. Hope you enjoyed it. Don, you got anything? Yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this show, um, do us a favor and share it with a friend. And uh, don't, don't forget to subscribe and uh, watch us on YouTube. Let's go, baby. Peace. Peace.